All new season of the Wrestling with Freddie podcast. That's right, Freddie. Get ready as we highlight the most jaw dropping matches, dissect the fiercest feuds, and uncover the latest twists and turns in the world of pro wrestling. And we obviously can't wait to hear from you, the Federation. Without you guys, none of this is possible. Listen to Wrestling with Freddie on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. From the Engel Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. The pounding begins. The wagons are circled. Every wind is raided. It's football time in America, and this republic has never been stronger. The Sportsocracy, Beer City's best sports talk, live from the Ingalls studio. And a welcome into the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. The Sportsocracy, heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We're seen everywhere on YouTube. Just go to thesportsocracy.com. Click the live video link, subscribe to the channel, join us in the chat for all of the Draftmas season coverage and all of the anticipation building up to to our our next next little journey to the other side of the world. Well, it's not really the other side of the world. It's just, well, it's much further than this little country bumpkin usually travels when we are uh, live in two weeks at the NFL Draft in Detroit, Michigan, and we will have uh, live coverage, of course, like we did for the 2024 NFL Scouting Combine in Indianapolis, Indiana. Today is a football Friday because every day is a football day here in the sportsocracy. Yes, we got the Masters going on. I'm sure Jeremy's going to have some, uh, some, some, some wagering tips for you as we go on throughout the program here. Live betting and such. Uh, at the Masters? Uh huh. Uh, You should not wager Bryson DeChambeau. I'm here for like what feels like the 437th time telling you just because he was good in the first round does not mean you need to go wager that. Because he has he has a fun way of going full poopy pants Mm -hmm. about every time we do this. That he does. Scotty Scheffler, he's right there uh, behind the leaders right now because Max Homa has caught up. I love him. In the second round. So he is now seven under par. I want him to win one of these. Max Homa. I don't know why I like him so much, but I do. I'm not real sure why either. I don't know why I like I just like watching him play. Um, Yeah, and then uh, what's this? Cameron Young, I think, is up here in, with five under, just behind Scotty Scheffler. Hoy Gore. That was a new one for me. Nikolai Hoygor. I think I enjoy hearing you try to pronounce that name as much as other people like hearing me say, Troy Faltano. <laughs> Hoygor down there in, uh, what's that, sixth place? Three under par. I don't know who Moore is, and it's not telling me. Taylor Moore. I would uh, Masters I wouldn't leaderboard. On him either. No. Oh. Second round of the uh, of the Masters. We'll keep you up to date, let you know if anything uh, interesting happens there. And if any of the odds shift in your favor, you might be able to make some scratch today on the uh, DraftKings Sportsbook app. It's a tradition unlike any other. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Also, a tradition unlike any other is our Draftmas coverage. Never ceases here in the sportsocracy. So, uh, Jeremy wants to talk about trades possible trades or trades that we'd like to see coming up in the NFL draft. Well, and and the, the impetus of this was you think back to last year. All right. The, the big move that we saw was Houston moving up with Arizona to get Will Anderson after they took CJ Stroud. Did you hear anybody outside of Daniel Jeremiah mention that in the pre-draft process? No, neither did I. I'm not sure it was mentioned by anybody else in the pre-draft process. So we keep looking at, well, Minnesota could trade up with blank or Denver could trade up with blank. What if there were, what if if we're not expecting the moves that are going to happen? Mm -hmm. And it got my little brain batteries moving to talk about prospect fits and to ask you, the listeners of this here program, what trades would you like to see? 
So in our YouTube chat, feel free to throw those out there. We've already had a few submissions. One, one of them from great Eagle fan Bob Brown, who said he'd like to see his Eagles trade Devontae Smith in a 2025 second-round pick for Pat Sertan in number 76. That seems a little aggressive to me. His rationale was that you can't afford A.J. Smith or uh, AJ Brown and Devontae Smith. So you get out in front of it, get Pat Sertan with Vic Fangio. I get it. I do. Mm -hmm. I understand why one would want to do that. Mm -hmm. is, that a, what, is that an overpay? No. I mean, I get it. I, I don't know that I want to send a second-round pick with Devontae Smith. That's That seems like a lot. Because I, we're just at a point where corners and wide receivers are valued reasonably close to one another. And so you get a pick this year for a pick next year, just a little bit higher pick next year than it is mm -hmm. this year. Mm -hmm. I get it. I was going to say, but is one side lo is one side winning out more than the other in that player well, slot? I mean, I would say Denver loses because you now you have a uh, now you have a great receiver and no quarterback. <laughs> You now, replaced now there's Jerry no Judy. lie in that, but but player to player, no, it doesn't even swap to me. It's close. I, I think Patrick, Patrick Sertan's a little better than Devontae Smith. Okay. I mean, you replace Jerry Judy with a much better version of Jerry Judy, and you're still equally awful at uh, at quarterback, which is that, – that's cool. Bo Nix will love uh, underthrowing Devontae Smith. No doubt. No doubt about it. All right, so that's the that's the first one from Bob Brown. Uh, Mike Baker says he wants to see the Chiefs move up for a left tackle. And Nick said he wants to see the uh, Jaguars move back for A.D. Mitchell. All right, I'm going to tackle those in the order they came in. Uh, Nick, I'm not sure that the Jaguars can move back much and get A.D. Mitchell. You probably would be in better shape to just go, hey, at 17, let's take him. And I, I wouldn't fault you for that. I don't know that he has as high of an upside as, say, a Brian Thomas Jr. does, but I also think he has a safer floor. I think he's special. I really do. The, uh, so yesterday, while we were off, I, I started watching some more tape and watching some highlight reels and, uh, and all of that. And it, I don't know, just kind of reminded me of what I missed this past year. If A.D. Mitchell had been with the Georgia Bulldogs this year, wouldn't have been near as near as iffy about the future of that team. He is a very special kid, and he is going to be phenomenal at the next level. I think. I think he'll be very, very good. good. I, I I don't I don't see as special as you do. Mm -hmm. I see really safe. And the good thing is, over the years, when I say a receiver tends to be pretty safe, they tend to be pretty safe. Uh, they're going to fall somewhere in between twenty and forty among receivers in the NFL. And if you told me that I got that as the Jacksonville Jaguars right there at the end of the teens, I'm here for that. Mm -hmm. Because Brian Thomas's range is he could be just outside the top 10 or he could be working at the Home Depot four years from now. So there's that. Mm -hmm. Much like I said about Terrace Marshall. It always scares me when two players that play at the same school remind me so much of each other and one of them was an unmitigated disaster. Was he a disaster? And he's what? What was he? A third round pick? He was a second round pick. Was he a second round pick? Okay, I was thinking third round pick. I get that he has like six catches maybe on his career. No, oh, you're you're low. Sixty four. <laughs> is it really? Sixty four. How does he have sixty four catches? Well, because he's been in the league for three years. I didn't so think he had played sixty four snaps in three years. If you go full Tommy Tremble and go twenty catches a year for three years, I get you to sixty math I guess is so. fun i guess so yeah he's never had more than 490 yards in a season and he's been under 150 yards receiving in two of his three years in the league and i was thinking he was a later round pick than that no he so, was a two okay well yeah that that, that hasn't worked, worked well uh now for to what um what mike baker said about left tackle for the chiefs i get why you said that i just don't know exactly who you're going to move up for now, if Olaf Fashanu or somebody like that falls, which the talk on that seems to be getting louder by the minute. But even if he falls, the drop dead spot is what? 20. I don't think he would get past Pittsburgh. Still, that's having to get up 12 spots if you're the Kansas City Chiefs. Well, you get up with the Rams at 19. It'd cost you a third-round pick. 
I mean, if that were to happen, mm -hmm. I'm all the way in. Mm -hmm. And I will be honest with you. I watch GMs do this year after year after year. You value these third-round picks, and they turn into Ja'Kai Polite. So maybe just hit the home run, and then, you know, you got a home run in the bag, so we can come up there and swing pretty hard. And if you strike out, you strike out. Works for Aaron Judge. Mm -hmm. But if if that doesn't happen, if Fashanu is not the one that or, – or if there's not a tackle, like one of the top prospects that falls, then you're trading up for – to get Tyler Guyton? I don't think you have to trade up to get Tyler Guyton. That was kind of my point, mm -hmm. is unless somebody falls, I don't think you have to do that. Because I look at Jordan Morgan and Tyler Guyton and Kingsley Suamatea, I think you have about the same hit rate with every one of them. If there's one that you're just dead in the wool on, okay, you could move up a few spots, but I'm not sure they don't fall right in your lap. It's funny to me how often I see teams move up. Then when Roger Goodell comes to the podium and says who they select, in the back of my head, I'm going, would you feel like you had to move up for it? Who exactly did you think was going to snipe you between here and there? Because if you look at what's directly in front of Kansas City, not a lot of teams that can take a tackle. I mean, Buffalo's got to have somebody that can catch football. Detroit has one of the best lines, lines in the, the NFL. NFL so so I, if it, they're taking a lineman, it's not a tackle. Mm -hmm. It'd be a guard. And there are a few other teams up there that I feel the same way. Baltimore would be the one I would worry about because they just tend to take the best player on board. But, I mean, I think Kansas City sits in a nice catbird seat. I would say it's more likely Kansas City trades down than that they trade up mm -hmm. because there are so many teams that are looking at quarterbacks and one of them is going to fall. Or do they need to get ahead of San Francisco? Is San Francisco going to take one? They would be another one. I think they would be more likely to take a guard. Mm -hmm. Look, Graham Barton has been the one that I've put with, with San Francisco for as long as I can I don't think he's making it that far. I don't either at this point. <laughs> he's his, one name his, that I've heard his, a lot more in the last two weeks. His dead set drop dead spot is 26. He will not get past the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. I have. Are you trying I, to will this into existence no, I've like seen, you did, Cody no, Mock? No, I've seen interviews with with the, the shot callers in Tampa, and they all talk glowingly about Graham Barton to the point where I think they might consider trading up to get him. I mean, you'd it's have possible. to get ahead of who, Miami? Miami's one you'd have to worry about. I think Pittsburgh's one you have to worry about. There are a couple more up there. So 19 with the Rams is a spot that 19 you, with the Rams is one I think right, you'd have to worry about. That you would be targeting one of those spots. Uh, then, looking back to the YouTube chat, our, our guy Matthew Hoffman, he said one of the things that I've been waiting on somebody to say which is why I did it out of order mm -hmm. in case he was wondering. Mm -hmm. He said he'd like to see the Dallas Cowboys trade up for a quarterback. Why? Can, can I ask that question? What, why <laughs> is this a thing that we're talking about? Because Dak Prescott's on a lame duck deal. Okay. And then worry about quarterback next year. So, I want to plan, so I guess. I, I've, I've heard every shot caller at ESPN, every big national name, at some point over the last two weeks talk about, could Dallas take a quarterback? Yes. Why? Why would you do that? You have one last ride here with Dak Prescott, assuming you don't think they're going to find a way to work this out, which I do. So what are you going to do? You're going to add Michael Penix? Because I, mean, I got news yes. for you. They're not getting high enough to take any of those top four guys. No. The, the cost Penix. on that would be insanity. Michael Penix is the one that I have seen, or, or the one that I guess all of those who are going down this path are saying that he's the target. I haven't seen anybody make this suggestion for anybody other than him. Other than Penix? Right. They don't move they don't make the move or they wouldn't take a quarterback if it was Bo Nix on the board. It's just if Michael Penix is sitting here, we gotta take him. I think we need to pump the brakes a little bit on Michael Penix. I, I've, I've been, been in a, 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 a now, now several, several days long argument with somebody about Michael Penix. And and it feels to me like you're not listening to what it is that I'm saying. Because what people tell me about him constantly is, oh, the arm talent, oh, the arm talent, oh, the arm talent. I'm not disputing that. I know he has the best arm in this class. That's not debatable. He also has the longest release. That's not debatable either. Time of release, the longest in this class of any quarterback that is even vaguely draftable is Michael Penix because he has a weird, elongated throwing motion. I don't know that behind what you have in Dallas right now, that's a positive. And I understand, he's cheaper. 
And Matthew Hoffman said he's, he's tired of Dak Prescott. I get it. Dak's better than Michael Penix. You have a better shot to win right now with Dak than you do with Penix. And so you're going to waste that last year by using prime draft capital on a quarterback. That's just not really how this works. Because it's not like Dak's going anywhere this year. So in a ride-or-die year, you're going to use your best piece of draft capital for next year. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, but it's also Jerry Jones. right? And if Jerry Jones is, is going to be Jerry Jones... Who knows where his head is at? Well, my argument with the Cowboys. Because he's the kind of guy that thinks, I can do this, and it'll it'll, it'll spark him. It'll it'll, it'll send back a message that that he needs to perform better. Okay. It makes no sense. Name me the time he's ever done that. I have no idea. Uh, uh, You know why? It's never happened. (laughs) And the entire time, Jerry Jones has been the the owner, GM, whatever you want to call him for the Dallas Cowboys. Mm -hmm. He's never done that. Took, uh, Troy Aikman was super early, first or second year that he owned the team. Yes. Might have been the first draft that he owned the team. It's 1988. Yeah, name me the other first-round quarterback he's drafted since then. Mm-hmm. I'll wait. Yeah, he ain't drafted one. Because there ain't one. No. There's been a lot of Quincy Carters and a lot of Drew Henson. He takes, which is why I'm telling you right now, and I just want you to remember that I said this, if Spencer Rattler's not a Dallas Cowboy, I will be stunned. Stunned stunned that that, that's not how that goes because that's his mo i take the later round guy and i turn that into a starter he did it with Mm -hmm. tony romo Mm -hmm. he did it with quincy carter he did it with drew henson he's now done it with dak prescott he does not invest high level capital into quarterbacks because they're never high enough to take that prime prospect it's not that he didn't try he's tried multiple times Mm -hmm. he's failed every single time because it is hard to get out of the 20s into the single digits because it's incredibly expensive yes I get what you're saying about, I'm tired of Dak. I think all of us are. It doesn't change anything. He's going to be the quarterback this year. And and next year, I don't love the quarterback class, but you're not going to have a whole lot of competition. Mm-hmm. There's not going to be a lot of teams looking at quarterbacks because look how many are going to be invested in a guy they drafted this year. That's six of your 32 teams. Mm-hmm. Look how many have drafted guys over the last two or three years. Look how many guys have franchise quarterbacks. You get to a very small list that are going to be competing for Quinn Ewers or Shadur Sanders or whoever it is that's at the top of class next year, and you have to look at that. But are the Dallas Cowboys one of those teams? Yes. That can be in the market for Quinn? Yes. I mean, if you've only got four teams that need a quarterback in the NFL, they're all in the market if there's only two. And you want to make the big move, you make it next year. Mm-hmm. But you don't make it in a last ride year with Dak Prescott because then all what you will get is half the fan base go, well, you wasted a draft pick on a quarterback. You didn't give Dak what he needed, and you're going to fracture the fan base even further. Mm-hmm. But that does leave the question. To me, there's one big, there's one big trade piece mm-hmm. that still has to be situated over the course of the next 13 days. So, receiver that's he's pretty good. Yeah, plays, he's all right. Plays for the. Cincinnati Bengals. And in the YouTube chat, we were asked if we had a place that made sense for T. Higgins. I think I do. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. That coming up next. Important part of the home. And this month, ESPN Asheville and Balkan Roofing are giving one away free of charge. Through April, go to ESPNAVL.com and click on the Balkan Roofing's Roofing for a Reason. Follow the link to nominate a homeowner in need of a new roof and why they should be our winner. At the end of the month, one iHeart Asheville winner will be selected. Make your nominations again at ESPNAVL.com. Roofing for a reason with Balkan Roofing. Spring has sprung and it's full tilt boogie time at GiveMeTheVin.com, America's best car buyer. Sell us your car. GiveMeTheVin.com. So easy you can do it in your underwear. Ew, gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. What's keeping you from learning the language you've always wanted to speak? Too hard. Takes too long. 
Not with Babbel. Babbel's interactive lessons, podcasts, games, and more make learning fun. Fun isn't hard. Right. And in 10 minutes a day, Babbel's bite-sized lessons are designed to get you having real conversations in as little as three weeks. That's not long. It's not hard. It's, It's perfect. perfect. It starts here. Go to Babbel.com to try for free. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. Babbel.com. Who's leading in the polls, red or blue? Who's heading to the governor's mansion? How about the White House? Get the latest updates right here on News Radio 570 WWNC. Western North Carolina's election station. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, It's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern Hospitality Touch. The sportsocracy. Let's open up the whole can and kick ass and kill them all. Let the paramedics sort them out. We're back at the sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. It is a Friday, the end of another work week. Long slog of a work week. Throughout the draft of the season, as we're counting down the days till our next big trip. We're well, going to be time, there in two weeks. This time we got to get Tank on an airplane. and I got to go buy a suit this weekend, and I'm I'm not, I'm not excited I mean, about that. Are, are we going full suited and booted? Because you don't necessarily have to. No, I I'm, I went to the wife yesterday, and I said, well, I'm going to the draft. And I want to. Wait, she didn't want, know that go. until now? No, she knew that. Okay, I was about to be but, like, wait a minute. But I was like. I want to have something nicer to wear. I mean, I, I never go to functions where I actually need to dress up. And I mean, if you're going to wear some, you know, outlandish suit, then I need, I at least need to have one. I think you would think a 40 year old man would have a suit by now, but I whoa, don't. Whoa, 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 wait, wait, wait. Uh, hold on. I, I, somehow, <laughs> I do not own a suit. No. Somehow you have never the lead on that. You've never have owned a never suit in your life. Suit. No. You see what I wear. Oh yeah, I wear station apparel and T-shirts. Oh yeah, and you, jerseys. You draft, or you dress like a uh, middle-aged uh, middle school gym teacher. I do, I do. I dress for comfort. So I have like collared shirts. I have like a couple of ties that I can throw on a collared shirt, so I can go to you know Easter service or something at church. But I've never had a suit. I mean, I I I, I ask this in the nicest way I can. Do you need help buying a suit? No, my wife's gonna go with me. Okay. So we're, we've we've right. we, we've got a plan. She's worked it out. Apparently, there's there's a nice little sale going on down at the Joseph A. Banks. So there's we're always get, a sale going on at so Joseph. We're, a. So Banks. we're gonna go down to the Joseph A. Banks or the or, or was it Men's Warehouse? I don't remember. It was Men's Warehouse or Joseph A. Banks. I don't remember. Well, I one. I do recommend Men's Warehouse. I'm friends with a couple guys down there because mm-hmm. I I am a suitman and I have a good number of suits. <laughs> right. See, I've never had the sales job where you've had to be on the road and be in front of you know people decision makers the only they don't talk to me when they want to make decisions i'm the guy that they go hey we made this decision won't you execute it oh okay, we we <laughs> we figured this out and now we need you to do it yeah uh the only problem is that most of my suits uh now i've become a little bit more of a fat man <laughs> i was gonna say and you're gonna so, look like carmelo anthony on draft night i'm gonna look like i mean you were <laughs> close you had the car right i'm gonna look like cartman eric cartman yeah <laughs> Oh, are you saying you've gotten bigger? Oh God, yeah. Oh yeah, I look like a wet dog coming in through the cat door at this point. It's mm. there. There would be buttons under great duress. Okay, All there, right. there there would be many T's and P's for it. But I do have the greatest uh, t- set of suit people uh, on the planet. If I want a regular suit, I go to Men's Warehouse. If I need a a, a tuxedo, then we go to Kathy Mitchell at Mitchell's Tuxedos. There you go. Which one am I gonna do? 
I haven't decided yet. <laughs> Depends on how outlandish I want to Well, see, be. I had mentioned going going to Mitchell's. And then and then she came up with the idea of actually going to find a suit. Well, so. I mean, you're a 40-year-old man. You need to own a suit. Maybe so. It's, Maybe so. I mean, there's. I am getting older, so that means there's more funerals in my future. Um, as as all of my fatter friends. Here's the only on. thing I will tell you: the jacket <laughs> should match the pants. It drives me nuts when people do that. Okay. Oh, I got ta- I got khakis with a blue blazer. No, yeah. that's not how suits work. I've seen that. I've seen that. It's awful. Don't do that. The blue blazer with the khaki pants. Yeah, don't do that. It's- Why not? Roy Williams did it. Uh, yeah. yeah. Can I wear that with my tennis shoes? And here's the thing: you win three <laughs> national titles, you can dress however you want to. Okay. Uh, Tyson Carter said, "As long as I'm rocking the uh, top hat, I'm not rocking a top hat, but I am rocking a hat that is pretty sweet, and it has the feather of a potentially endangered bird in it. So, a feather that let's not do feathers. Oh, we're doing it. No, it's happening. It's already no. been made right now. Oh, it it is." decided oh good lord he's gonna show up looking like the godfather from wwe in 1997 that's not a terrible (laughs) reference it is gonna be kind of a blend of the godfather kind of a blend of cam newton and kind of a blend of uh west virginia the west virginia ninja i hate this a lot (laughs) ninja star whatever it is i hate it a lot Ooh, okay. All right. Anyhow, we'll be bringing you all the coverage live from uh, the 2024 NFL Draft in Detroit Thursday and Friday. All the live coverage during the show. And then, of course, we'll have live coverage on the YouTube stream for the night for all of the picks. We'll be giving them to you and uh, all of the all, all of the things that we can uh, we can glean from the backstage access there in detroit um so you had teased we're talking about trades that we would possibly like to see before the or during the 2024 nfl draft and yeah t higgins is out there that's the one that i keep looking at going there's got to be a trade here somewhere i think there is i think there is and it makes it makes sense on both sides and it's not a team that i think outside of me saying it Mm -hmm. that i've heard one time Okay, sorry, Carolina Panthers fans. Nope, Carolina doesn't. Uh, but if you go Carolina, you've got Deontay Johnson, you got Adam Thielen. One of them's going to have to play on the outside, and I think that's probably Deontay Johnson. That would not mean you're tapping out on Jonathan Mingo, but it's almost a red flag of we think we boo-booed here. And I don't think they did, and they don't think they did. No. Because now Adam Thielen's what, your four? Mingo's your four? four. That doesn't, doesn't make, make a lot of sense. sense. You, you tell, tell me who says, says no. If Brad, Brad Holmes picks up the phone and says, we'll, we'll give you the 29th pick in this draft, and, and T. Higgins, Higgins becomes a Detroit Lion, Lion you tell me who says no. Because I'm Cincinnati, Cincinnati, I get a fifth-year option, option on whoever that is. Who, who says no? Yeah, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that anybody. And now I've got T. Higgins with Amon Ross St. Brown, and I can let Jameson Williams be the high flyer over the top. Shoot, buddy. And, and I'm in the NFC. I'm 100% all in because you're not getting Ben Johnson and Aaron Glenn all back next year. No. It, it's not happening. You got one season at this. Yeah. I don't see who says no. And you immediately become the favorite in the NFC if you're not already. I think they're already the favorite. Right. I don't. I but think they're already the favorite. The, but it would be hard for me not to believe that. If because all of the other the t- all of the other teams that have that kind of capital – Buffalo. Mm-hmm. I'm not trading you to the Buffalo Bills. I'm not going to have to contend with Josh Allen and T. Higgins as my team gets more expensive. You killed yourself. I'm not helping you. I'm not throwing you a life raft. You jumped off the boat. I'm not doing it with any team in the AFC. Mm-hmm. New England. I, I think it was Tyson Carter that said that in the – I understand why you would want to do that. problem is you can't beat the 29th pick. You don't have another first-round pick, and you're certainly not given three. So – I've got you beat. Mm-hmm. You can give me future stuff, but if I'm Cincinnati, I'm in a window here. I think I'm a contender. The ASC is a little weaker than it was a year ago. I'm looking at Baltimore going, hey, you don't have any receivers. I'm looking at Pittsburgh going, hey, you don't have any quarterbacks. I'm looking at Cleveland going, oh, I don't want to play that defense, but I'm 
terrified of your quarterback. No. So give up the 29th pick in the draft to get T. Higgins just a one year rental, right? No. If I'm if I'm no, Detroit, do I'll you have the money term. to? Do they have the money to do that? Eighth most in the NFL. Okay. They have Thirty million dollars in active cap space. Okay. And nothing going down the line to preclude them from giving him the five year, whatever. That's monster a, deal he wants. It's a uh, it, it's a it's a good question because you do have Amon Ra coming up next year. And I get what you're saying, but I think there's one thing that people tend to forget. You do realize that Jared Garf, he's also a free agent next year. Mm -hmm. What does that deal look like? Do you think Jared Goff's going to be a $50 million quarterback? Because I don't. Yes. I don't. <laughs> yes, I do. I don't. I think he's happy in Detroit. If I he think wins he would take Super less. Bowl? Oh, well, he may be. A, he I think may he take would take less. less. He is I'm appreciated, he is respected, and I've already been on the opposite side he of this. He ain't taking less than 40. That's I the baseline. I don't know that I agree now. with you. I wouldn't be shocked if he took that Baker Mayfield deal verbatim. Give me that. We're good. I want to win. I've, I've, I've made a lot of money. I've already had one gigantic deal. You give me that three-year deal for roughly a little over $100 million, throw me a few incentives just in case I win a Super Bowl, mm -hmm. I'm good. I want to keep this team together. Detroit is a different animal than virtually any other team in the league because that team really seems to like each other. And that's where I start seeing guys go, I don't have to be the highest paid player in the league. Yeah, and there's always something to be said for that. However, Jared Goff, is he going to get another chance to make money? Is he going to get another chance to get a bigger deal? How old is Jared Goff right now? He's 30. 30? Right you, were wrong. you were wrong as soon as you started that with a th. Is he 29? He's 29. Okay. 29 years old. Already mm -hmm. had one gigantic deal. I'm not so sure of that. Okay. None of those guys. It's a it's a whole culture thing. Mm -hmm. Of They have all bought in. They all want to be together. Yeah. And if you look at the cap ledger, they're not in bad shape. I mean, I'm looking at what they've got right now. You've got, I mean, you do have some guys that make some money. Mm-hmm. But it's not insane. I mean, right. Upcoming season, how many players on the Lions roster have a cap hit of over ten million dollars? Seven. It's four. Really? And one of them's Cam Sutton. Okay. All right. Aiden Hutchinson's still on a rookie deal. Then Penae Sewell's still on a rookie deal. Mm -hmm. Obviously, all the guys they drafted last year. When you have that many high-end contributors on low-end deals, you can afford to do this. Team's going to get real expensive in no five doubt. years, though. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt. But who cares about five years from now? If I can get T. Higgins. We, we've shown this. I mean, we don't look that far ahead. No. Why I'm in a window right you? now. Yeah. I'm going to go, but I, I will go all in to win a Super Bowl right now. Yeah, the only one that should be looking at, uh, ahead at that window is – well, the GM and and uh, and Dan Campbell. Well, just look how far down that rabbit hole Philadelphia and New Orleans have gotten. Still stayed competitive. Detroit's not even gotten into the window yet. You're you're worried about contracts that I physically can't even negotiate yet. Yes, and I understand they're coming. I get that. I can move money around. Mm -hmm. Oh, and by the way, have you noticed that the cap went up a whole whole lot? Hey, guess what? It's gonna do it again. Mm -hmm. Not to the same level. But it's going to go up, and, and it's going to keep going up. Yep. And it'll keep climbing every year of uh, of those deals. That's the one that makes the most sense to me. And I would love to see that deal, and I'll be really honest with you of, as to why. I think there's going to be a corner that falls into that spot. I think J.C. Latham will be sitting there at 18 for Cincinnati, and I can take care of two of my biggest needs. Or you could have Jerzon Newton f fall right there at 29. And you tell me they walk away with J.C. Latham and Jerzon Newton, uh, Cincinnati won. Yep. You had a receiver that wanted to be paid like a top 10 receiver in the league. You got a first-round pick for him. And you filled two of your biggest needs in. Done. Mm -hmm. And go back to that deal that we saw on draft night a couple of years ago, the A.J. Brown thing. That came out of nowhere. This one could as well. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville.
Milder days ahead with 80 degree temperatures possible by the end of the weekend as high pressure is finally going to settle back in. Wind advisory and gusty winds this afternoon, close to 60 degrees with that wind gusting 40 plus in spots and maybe a couple of showers right through your Friday evening. So grab the rain gear if you are going to be heading out. We'll break up the clouds late, still quite breezy to windy overnight. Lows in the low 40s, sunny, breezy, and upper 60s on Saturday. Sunday sunshine up near 80. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Allstate. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate, not one based on anyone else. So if you drive safely, you could save money. Good to know. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today. Introducing Tanside Stone Tile Flooring. A game changer in the tile industry. Say goodbye to the trade-off between durability and easy installation with Tanzite's revolutionary indoor-outdoor stone tile. Visit Tanzite.com to see how our tile is installed without concrete or mortar. Instead, our innovative rubber gasket system connects the tiles together. Each tile coming pre-assembled, you simply grab one and place it. No expertise needed. At Tanzite.com, you can see how our foam back tiles contour to cover any existing floor while insulating against sound and cold. Beautiful and versatile, Tanzite tile adapts to indoor or outdoor use, from kitchens to patios on concrete basements or wooden decks, all with the durability of stone that's guaranteed for life. Witness this innovative product yourself and order a sample today at Tanzite.com. That's T-A-N-Z-I-T-E.com. Train heating and cooling systems are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you. They run together. Visit traininfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. Traininfo.com. It's hard to stop a train. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White Haze, Peach Perfect, Scary Berries, and my personal favorite, Mean Green. And number three at 6% ABV, Max Protect. Always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. Boy, you must be outside your mind. The Sportsocracy. Just a bit outside. He tried the corner and missed. It is the Sportsocracy, and we are back in the Ingalls studio on ESPN Asheville. The Paris Olympics are coming up in about 100 days, Jeremy. I know you can't wait. Bait it with bated it just, breath. It just really, you love the thrill of victory and the agony of defeat. And, you know, the competition for the love of competition. Oh, yeah. I'm, is, I'm all in on the, uh, the, the, the curling. That's the Winter Olympics. This is oh, the Summer, summer. Olympics. Oh, so you mean we're going to run around the same track 442 yes. times? Awesome. Yes. Yeah, I think I have to wash my hair that month. <laughs> True athletic competition on display in Paris this summer with the Olympic Games. And um, now they're talking about possibly having to cancel or at least postpone one of the events, the triathlon, the one where you run and then you and then you cycle and then you have to swim. Well, part of the part part of the the allure of this year's event was going to be that the swimming part takes place in the River Seine. The, the 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 famous river there that runs through Paris. Well, the Paris organizing committee has now had to admit that the triathlon swimming section 
could be postponed or canceled if pollution levels are still too high because they have a very similar problem that, hmm, the, wait, the French Broad River has. That can't be possibly a weird connection there. The French Broad River, they're French. That's, they call us the Paris of the South, and they got poo in their river too. Wait a minute. Who has ever called us the Paris of the South? Oh, that's a thing. You did not know that? We're the San Francisco of the East, yep. and we're the Paris of the South. Okay. No good can come from how I'm going to respond to that. So I'll just say that, okay. Uh, they say that uh, if the poo in the river is still too much at that point, then they could have to cancel part of the event, which then would, of course, make it a duathlon instead of a triathlon, and they just do the running and the cycling thing. I was just... Tr- when I heard this, I immediately thought back to, because, you know, I like the Olympics and I remember things about the Olympics, the 2016 Olympics in Rio, the toxic sludge that was the Brazilian waters that they had to trek through, the ones that they sent out the warnings where the athletes couldn't ingest more than three teaspoons of the water without getting like 1.7 million, you know, m- m- megabytes or whatever of, of, yeah, I said it, I said megabytes of 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 you know bacteria in their lungs just gross just absolutely gross stop it there were so many things wrong with that statement well yeah it was just one really just mm. one thing are you sure? i don't know what the hell they call them micro bits or was it nano seconds i don't know shut up so <laughs> so you're saying that they they told us there was going to be a a, a triathlon triathlon now you're you're not going to pay off that promise maybe not never tell somebody there'll be a tricycle when there won't be my story is about kyle mccord he's used to be the quarterback at ohio state and this is you know all those people that that lambasted me over the years for saying nil is going to have a it's going to have an effect that you're not anticipating Jeff Goodman came out with a story yesterday that said there was a player not in the transfer portal that has already let teams know it will cost $1.5 million in NIL money for him to even enter the portal. He won't leave for less than $1.5 million, which is Mm -hmm. insane to me. I don't know who the player is. He didn't report it. But there's another level of this. And it came to bear on, I'm not sure what podcast this is, uh, I, I think it was one of the barstool ones. They at, they had Kyle McCord on, and they asked him how things went at Ohio State. And here's what he said. We didn't get in the playoff, and we started quickly having conversations of what the future was going to look like. That's just the reality of college football now. Everything moves so fast with the transfer portal window opening right after the season. So they thought they should move in one way, and I, accordingly, thought I should move in another. He went on to elaborate about this, and basically what happened is that Ryan Day came to him and went, you can stay here. You're not going to play. Mm-hmm. So I highly encourage that you put your name in the portal and go now get. See, this is the part that nobody wanted to talk about with NIL. Yes, we'll pay you, but what does that make you? That makes you an employee. Yes. So when the employee doesn't do what you tell them to do and they don't perform, what happens to the employee? Bye. They get fired. Mm-hmm. And it's happening all time over the college landscape and nobody seems to want to care and i'll be honest why with you, i don't care i was gonna say why should you we you did this to yourself i have no sympathy for you whatsoever if we're gonna give all of the players the freedom of movement then the schools have to have it too right the schools have to have the ability to say no sir you're not living up to your end of the bargain be gone i told you this multiple times you're worried about 1% of athlete that is worth actual NIL money. And you're doing all of this at the expense of the other 99%. Yes. Seems to be a trend in today's America, but mm-hmm. we don't do politics, so you can just assume what I'm talking <laughs> it's about. It's called capitalism, my friend. That's, that's, that's how fine. that works. That's fine. <laughs> Survival of the fittest. I did enjoy all of the... Um, all of the people t- that were talking about, it's not fair. Your context of fair is really warped. 
What's not fair? Oh, uh, the players uh, can't, players can't get paid. The uh, vast majority of these players aren't worth getting paid, Karen. So uh, you find something else to be angry at. Mm-hmm. Don't threaten them with that, though. They will. Next thing you know, Merriman Avenue will have two bike lanes. <laughs> Never seen a bicycle. Lived on it three years. <sighs> Never seen a bicycle. Yep, yep, yep. I had to meet you up there. The uh, just That was yesterday, wasn't it? God, it seems like it's been forever. That was Wednesday. That was Wednesday. Ugh. It's the first time I had been on that road at 5 o'clock. It's a hoot. Yeah. Thanks, geniuses. It's a hoot and a half. You're in the Sportsocracy, CSP in Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM and 1400. We've been cooking up some trades, trades that we would like to see for the 2024 NFL draft or involving the draft. Um, in the YouTube chat, we've had several good suggestions. Um, A lot of people seem to really want Patrick Sertan. Everybody seems to be trading the Denver Broncos. I feel like the Denver Broncos at this point are the possum that got hit by a car, and every other team is just a crow that's yes. sweeping in to get a little gizzard. Yes. I mean, you've you've sent everything else away, right? You're tearing this team down to the studs. If Patrick Sertan's available, I'm calling. I can tell you he is available for the right price. Mm-hmm. What that price is, I don't know. Same thing with T. Higgins. You need a wide receiver. You're, of course, you're kicking the t- tires on that thing, trying to figure out how you can get that that deal done. Um, here's one calling for Nick's calling for the Jaguars to be the destination for T. Higgins. That the Jags and the Bengals can swap first round picks. The Jags give a two, and get T. So Cincinnati moves up a spot, which is worth about the the equivalent of a fourth round pick. And you get a second round pick, and you give him to a really good quarterback in your own conference. I understand. I think Nick is a Jaguars fan. I understand why the Jaguars would do that. I don't, for the life of me, understand why Cincinnati would do that. If I'm trading him to a team in the AFC, it's New England. Hey, you want it out? You go enjoy that. Doesn't look like it'd be a lot of fun to me, but I would rather just ship him to the NFC and be done with it. Right. Uh, I'm still rooting for Minnesota. That's the deal I'm rooting for, is that Minnesota makes the deal to get a quarterback. Well, we're going to talk about prospects in the next hour. Okay. T is really the only – that's really the only player that I look around the league and go, that makes sense. Mm -hmm. And it seems like we have one of these every year. Because the only two – and now correct me if I'm wrong on this. I think the only two franchise players that haven't agreed to long-term deals are T. Higgins and Antoine Winfield. Right. Antoine Winfield's not going anywhere. No. So – I don't I don't think there will be a lot of player movement. But I have been caught off guard with that in the past. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So um no other deals. I mean Brandon I look, that's the one that oh, that everybody yeah, seems one. to want to talk about. Yeah. I I don't know how real that actually was. I know San Francisco made some calls. But this is a great time for me to specify again. Teams make calls about a lot of things. Mm -hmm. All right, just because I picked up a phone and had a conversation with somebody and it got leaked to a reporter doesn't mean that I was really interested in doing it. But if I'm not making Iuk, if if I'm not making the long-term play for Iuk, I'm not giving him $20 million because I already have Debo Samuel that I'm giving $20 million to. Does it not make sense to I don't come think off him the, now? I don't think the contract is as big of an impediment for Iuk as people think. I look at that team and the way it's built. It is way more likely to me that they would come off an aging Trent Williams, a piece of the defense that's that's expensive. I don't know how that offense would function. without. It's one thing if you could replace him comfortably. What San Francisco found from what I've been told is that every team in the NFL feels about this receiver class the same way that I do, which is why would I trade for a player? who's not elite, and I've yet to talk to a person that thinks that Brandon Ayuk is an elite receiver in this league. Mm-hmm. Why would I pay top dollar for him, then have to give him an extension? And San, that's what San Francisco wants. They want a pick that they can replace him with. And I just don't think it's coming. I think T. Higgins is worth a late one, early two. 
much in the same vein of what A.J. Brown was worth a few years ago. And I would say I looks probably later in the second. It may fall all the way, all the way to the third. Wow. Because you're going to have to pay him disproportionately to what he's worth. Receiver market's ballooned. So he's going, you said $20 million. Yes. It's a weird way to say 25 because that's going to be closer to where he falls in. Mm-hmm. And I don't think anybody's lining up to do that. San Francisco looked at it and went, well, we have no problem keeping him. And we'll just pay him. Yeah. Uh, which is I th- which is what I think they should do. I from from what I've been told, no team was really down that rabbit hole except except Pittsburgh. And I think there's a great chance that Pittsburgh takes a receiver at twenty. Okay. That's really chimed up in the last week. They were locked in on Cooper DeGene and and a couple other defensive pieces, and I've started hearing more and more about receivers there at twenty. Mm-hmm. And you're in the sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. Uh, Jeremy, the Masters is going on right now. And let's check in on the leaderboard here. Uh, Jordan Spieth just went full snowman. Oh, no. Yeah, that that pick didn't go well for you yesterday. I like ping pong. <laughs> in our daily draft of planting our flag on who could win, Spieth was pretty high on your list. He always had a great tournament at all. It's always a risk with Jordan Spieth. More so than any really good golfer I think I've ever seen. He just goes full dumpster fire Mm -hmm. way too often. Uh, We are just underway in the second round of the tournament, or at least uh, your leader, your day one leader, is just underway with his second round through two. Bryson DeChambeau still at seven under par. Max Homa, who started the day at five under par, has uh, has gained two strokes here. Is that right? Yes. So, okay. And uh, he's now tied with DeChambeau at seven under. Scotty Scheffler has yet to tee off. He tees off at 147, I think I heard earlier today. Uh, he is one shot behind at six under par at the Masters, the 88th Masters down at Augusta National. And if, you know, you wanted to try to make a little wager on the Masters, you could do that with our good friends over at the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app today, and uh, you can get $200 in bonus bets when you just uh, when you just spend five there, right, Jeremy? Sorry, my computer is frozen up, and I'm trying to trying to get along in the read here and it's just not working with ah there you go DraftKings Sportsbook an official sports betting partner of NASCAR is now live in the North Carolina in North Carolina and you can bet on all of your favorite sports anytime anywhere right here in the Tar Heel State with DraftKings again for a limited time new customers who sign up with the promo code WPEK and bet five dollars will get $200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings has all the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more, plus fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using the code WPEK and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with the code WPEK. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus North Carolina only bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance deposit and eligibility restrictions apply terms at draftkings.com slash sportsbook slash NC NASCAR is not a prom- sponsor of this promotion and used under license. Hey, if you're listening to me right now, I have one thing every business needs most attention. Think about it. We swipe and scroll past stuff all day. But when we're driving, cooking, working out, we're also listening. That's the magic of audio at iHeart. We're in your next customer's ears while they're living life and listening, just like you are right now. So get your customers to listen up today using radio, digital, and podcasts. Call 844-AD-HELP-5. That's 844-AD-HELP-5. 
He's a former coach with two sons who played professional basketball. Satch Sullinger's a competitive individual, but his golf game was suffering because of painful joints. Right. That's real important. The golf game. Right. As we get older, we create these bad habits because we're relegated to hit a certain way. QC Kinetics used regenerative treatments, all natural healing properties from Satch's own body, to restore those damaged joints and get his golf game back on track. QC Kinetics Regenerative Medicine is regenerating me all natural and that's what i'm about i'm gonna tell everybody why i'm better oh and by the way it looks like the competitive satch is back we're all in the same boat and i'm getting better and i'm watching them stay old go to qckinetics.com get relief and your game back call for your complimentary consultation call qc kinetics 828-333-9517 that's 828-333-9517 828-333-9517 the free iHeart Radio app has over 100 commercial free stations waiting for you to explore right now. Like Alt 2K. Don't want to be an American idiot. A commercial free look back to alternative from the 2000s. With Foo Fighters, Weezer, Linkin Park, Green Day, the Red Hot Chili Peppers, and more. Just open the free iHeart Radio app, search Alt 2K, and listen now. iHeart Radio, free, never sounded so good. iHeart Radio. People are talking about Summit Dental in Asheville. Just check out their Google reviews. One patient writes, I'll start by saying I really hate going to the dentist. My anxiety is always through the roof and I'm always so nervous. However, Summit Dental may be the first place that my anxiety is actually not going through the roof. The staff that works at Summit are an incredible team. They're kind, knowledgeable, and funny. I left feeling confident that we have a plan to help restore my teeth and get me on track to a better smile. Find out more about Summit Dental at AshevilleSummitDental.com or call 828-277-6868. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828 828- 774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. Earlier this week, I told you about anomalies in sports wagering. It is a great tool to use to make money when wagering sports. Today, I'm going to give you another one, and that is uncertainty. I'm Jeremy Green of the Sportsocracy.com, and this is Green on Green, brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. We're to the end of the NBA season. This is the final weekend of the regular season. And now we have teams like the Boston Celtics who are 13 games ahead of everybody in the East, and they don't really have much to play for. Tonight, they take on the Charlotte Hornets, who, well, I'm going to be nice and say they're not very good. It's a young team that's just playing out the string. Oddsmakers have set the spread on this game at 7.5, and and here's why. They have no idea who's going to play for Boston. They have no idea how much Charlotte actually cares, and so they set a number on this that makes sense in their minds. If you look at a game and have no idea who's going to play, oddsmakers don't necessarily know either. But here's where I feel like they're missing the boat. The backups for Boston should comfortably beat Charlotte. Even if Charlotte goes all out and plays all their starters and really wants to win this game, the backups for Boston are just flat out better. So I'll take Boston minus the seven and a half to win comfortably tonight. You can also use this for the rest of the weekend on teams like Boston, like Milwaukee, like Denver, Minnesota, and Oklahoma City, because they all fall into the exact same boat. And next week, I'll explain the fun that is betting playoff basketball. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using code JGBETS and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code JGBETS. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. 
This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Milder days ahead with 80 degree temperatures possible by the end of the weekend as high pressure is finally going to settle back in. Wind advisory and gusty winds this afternoon, close to 60 degrees with that wind gusting 40 plus in spots and maybe a couple of showers right through your Friday evening. So grab the rain gear if you are going to be heading out. We'll break up the clouds late, still quite breezy to windy overnight. Lows in the low 40s, sunny, breezy, and upper 60s on Saturday. Sunday sunshine up near 80. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Allstate. Some people just know the best rate for you is a rate based on you with Allstate, not one based on anyone else. So if you drive safely, you could save money. Good to know. Visit Allstate.com or call for a quote today. From the Ingle Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. To tell you that Kino picks 20 winning numbers, we wrote a winning number of our own. Hit it, boys. You pick up to 10. Kino picks 20. It's easy to play for a whole lot of money. Winning numbers are everywhere with Kino from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds to win a prize range from 1 in 3.86 to 16.63. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. Try the new orange Dreamsicle Frosty at Wendy's. It's like walking down recent memory lane. To have orange Dreamsicle Frosty in our timeline is truly something special. And we shouldn't let the moment pass us by. And be quick. It's only available for a limited time. Join the M.B. Haynes family and enjoy excellent benefits, including medical, dental, and life insurance, 401K, employee stock ownership program, holidays, and paid vacation. M.B. Haynes has an immediate need for HVAC commercial service techs, plumbing, and electrical technicians. If you're ready to make a career change that positively impacts your workday and your time off, go to mbhaines.com slash careers to view available positions and apply. That's mbhaines.com slash careers. M.B. Haynes, quality, commitment, character. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingle Studio. It is ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. We are the Sportsocracy, and we're heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Seen everywhere on YouTube. Go to thesportsocracy.com. Click that live video link so you can subscribe to the channel. That'll get you into the chat. Get your thoughts in on uh, draft day trades that you would like to see. We've heard a lot of response in the YouTube chat already. We'll get to uh, all of those questions, uh, all of those scenarios as well, plus give you the things that we'd like to see coming up uh, in the 2024 NFL draft. Also, uh, throughout the uh, rest of the program, we're, we're, we're going to be starting a little project that I started of looking back on the draft, they're the drafted players for every franchise for the last 40 years, what's the top five? Who are the best draft picks? I'll give you my top five. Floster Domus, Jeremy Green will rip my uh, list to shreds. And we <laughs> and it'll be a fun little process that we'll, we'll talk about each and every team every day going up to, or we'll get everybody in going up to the 2024 NFL draft, which we will be covering live in Detroit, Michigan. Can't wait. Thank you to uh, Ingle Supermarkets for making that trip happen once again. Greatest partners we could ever ask for. Friday, Saturday is going to be a that that's going to be a fun time for me, because I will also be doing day three. Uh, your radio uh, co-host Mark Starling is getting married that Saturday. Yes, so you will not be with me, and I've got I got a new whole new host of friends <laughs> that you're going to meet. Yes, that will have a role moving forward. Because, you know, if you've listened to us for any period of time, you know that after the draft is really when we set, we reset the decks. Mm -hmm. I take some time off. And by some time, I mean, you're going to forget what I look like at one point. (laughs) And then we come back for football season and we've got new segments. We've got new things. We've usually got new imaging because, well, thank you. I don't like listening to the same thing over and over again. 
Uh, and this year, this is probably the biggest reset we've ever done. We've got we've got some new friends that you will really like that do really good stuff, and they'll be doing really good stuff for us. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, lots of new things coming up in the new sportsocracy year. And Tank just did that thing where he nodded at me and went, I know some of this, but I'm not sure I, I know, know everything you're talking about. I don't know about. what he's talking about, but uh, it's always it's always an adventure here in the sportsocracy, not only for you as the listener, but also for me sometimes. He cooks these things up in his head, and then he doesn't share them, and it's like, oh, yeah, I forgot to tell you. We're doing cool stuff, which I'm always down to do cool stuff, so yay. Yeah, Tank looked at me and went, I can't believe we're really going to the NFL draft. Yeah. Oh, no, it. Uh, wait, there was also another element of that that I handed him a list, and he went, I don't think you're supposed to have this. No, I, no, I am. No, you stole that. I from did somebody. not steal that off the black web. It's the dark web. <laughs> nope. It was sent to me. Mm-hmm. We're allowed to have that. Very good. Very good. Um, all right, let's talk some more draft trades here. So I want to talk about specific teams mm-hmm. and specific players. Okay. So we've talked ad nauseum about Minnesota moving up for a quarterback, Denver moving up for a quarterback, possibly the Raiders. I'm taking quarterbacks off the board. Okay. There are a few moves that I would like to see. And one of them is the Arizona Cardinals. That's the one that jumps off the table to me. Because I look at what Arizona has in draft capital. They have the third most capital in the NFL. They're behind the Bears, which is a little misleading. Right, because the Bears have two top ten picks. And then they don't have another one until 75. Right. So, I look at Arizona, and you've got three picks in the top 35. I would really like to see them move off 27. I've said I have 18 first-round grades in this class. We all talk about them moving down from four. Mm -hmm. What if they moved up from 27? Let's say Quinion Mitchell falls to, I'll go 13 with the Raiders. And the Raiders have a lot of pieces that I'm sure they like, but they'd also like to have more capital. Mm -hmm. That's where I look to Arizona and go, if I could walk out of this with Marvin Harrison Jr. and Quinion Mitchell, I feel like I have two franchise players on each side of the ball. And now I can't stop doing it. Uh, Monday, just a little programming note, we're going to do, and this is outside of the top two. I don't do this the same way Walter Football does. We're going to do a mock draft where every pick is traded. (laughs) <laughs> okay walter used to do that so and it fun. drove me nuts of don't trade no one pick we know they're not doing that just take the ones we already know and then move the ones that we don't expect and yes we are your full one-stop shop for all things nfl draft yes but the move for the cardinals is i want them to move up from 27 to a spot where they could get quinion mitchell because mm-hmm. to me that's the only lockdown corner in this class why why would the raiders not do that i've seen him paired with them a he lot makes sense the raiders were just a the raiders are not the team i make the deal with in the in the mock that we'll do on monday mm-hmm. but i think that's roughly where you have to get to the team that makes the most sense is denver oh denver's not it. moving back to 27 think about it top four quarterbacks are gone do I want to take Bo Nix at twenty or at twelve? No, a lot more palatable to take him at twenty seven, isn't it? Who's going to jump in front of me? Mm-hmm. Who's, Who's going to trade him? up to get that? I can also add. It would probably cost sixty six. Might cost thirty five. I doubt it. I, I think you would probably have to. That would be something where they would get twenty seven and thirty five. You would get twelve and whatever their pick is in the third round. Yeah, I don't think Arizona would do that, and I'm not sure I would encourage them to do that. But if I could add an extra day two pick by falling down, I still get Bo Nix at 27. I think that works out for both teams. That's my hesitation with Bo Nix. I, he's not, there's, it's also my hesitation with J.J. McCarthy. There's no world where he's the fifth best prospect in this class. There's no world where Bo Nix is the 12th best prospect in this class. And I understand you have to pay the quarterback tax, but, I mean, we're getting into an insane amount here. Yeah, how much are you going to pay? I have Bo Nix in the third round, talent-wise. Yeah. You take him at 12, that has bust written all over it. You take him at 27, it changes the expectation. Then Bo Nix comes in. Let's say he starts 12 games this year. Denver goes 6-11, and but he develops over the course of the the year. 
you're never looking at him going, man, he's not the 12th. He wasn't the 12th best player in that class. You're right. He was 27. Mm-hmm. And those two things fit like a puzzle piece to me. It does. Because Arizona has a – they have a lack of, of talent. But they have a lot of young players. Mm-hmm. They need franchise players. Marvin mm-hmm. Harrison is one of those. Quinion Mitchell is one of those. I, I'm glad that that was your first pick. Because I wasn't sure what the deal was. But Arizona with so much capital, why would you not do that? Why would you not trade up at every opportunity – when you have, what is it, like 14 picks they have in this draft? 12 picks, somewhere in that neighborhood? 11. 11. You got 11 picks. They have 11 and 6 in the top 90. You're going to get your... Be, 7 in the top 103. Because I, I, don't, I don't buy into the whole moving out of 4. I, I'm against that move completely. You stay at 4, you get your wide receiver. Even if somebody if somebody came to you with three first-round picks, you're moving out of 4. Uh, yeah. I now, mean, I'd, I I sure. might go full Austin for it, move out of four, go to 11, and then move back up to eight with the Falcons and Bingo. get Roma Dunze. Yes. I'm, I, I'm, I'm getting a stud. That. I'm, get, I'm getting a stud one way or the other. I'm going to be able to, with all the capital I have, I will be able to get a stud wide receiver somehow, some way. If it's not Ooh, Marvin I, Harrison at four. I hadn't even thought of it that way. If I could make the move back and then move, make the move up with 27, make that literally is three trades in the first round from one team. Mm-hmm. But then you walk away with a Dunze and Quinion Mitchell, and you have a first, an extra first round pick next year. Mm-hmm. That's probably your best case scenario. I just don't think it's there. No, I don't either. I don't think anybody is is giving up that hundred and seventy percent premium. No, I don't either. So, so I mean, I don't really buy into the Chargers or the Cardinals moving. I've struggled with that this whole process. And then when it got to the point of a hundred percent of people are this is where this goes. Anytime we have those in mock drafts, I went back and looked. Anytime I've ever had the no doubt somebody's going to make this move, it never happens. Mm -hmm. And then you get a team on the clock, and we sit there for the full 10 minutes waiting on Arizona to make their move, and then they never do. Mm -hmm. And the pick gets announced, and we all just kind of look around like, hey, you remember remember that thing we did when the draft order came out? That was the thing they did. Can I take the, not counting the number four overall pick, because I like I said, I want to keep that one take the wide receiver. If there's an opportunity to trade down, somebody wants to give me the farm, I will listen like Monty Austin for it. But for the most part, I'm planning on keeping that pick. Well, then I have five other picks outside of the number four overall that land inside the top 100. Can I not swing things, move things around to give me, say, I don't know, three picks, three more picks inside the top 50? Okay. Or whittle that down to from five picks in the top 100 to four picks inside the top 70. All right, so basically the way the, the deal with Denver would work is that they would get – they'd give up 27-35 to Denver, and then they would get 12 and 76. I have no qualm with that. Mm-hmm. Because honestly, I'll probably take 76 and move again. Because they have three third-rounders now. Yes. That would give them four. Yeah, I'm going to package two of those up into the second round. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of moving around the board. There are very few teams that I think can just sit back and and select players in in spot and make that work. It's basically Baltimore, Pittsburgh, and Green Bay. That's the only three I can think of off the top of my head. We did get asked to do a uh, best GM, best drafting GMs, best drafting teams draft, which I feel like we can get in sometime next week. Sure, sure. No doubt about it. I don't remember who asked us to do that, but I I missed it. Then I saw it after the show was over, and I don't know what just triggered my mind to that. But. Yeah. When you have so much capital like the Arizona Cardinals do, it's hard to think that you just stand pat. In a top-heavy draft like this, I want to maximize all of my picks as close to the top as I can. If you walk away from this class – as Arizona with three guys that you know are building block pieces for the future I think you've done well Mm -hmm. and it could be as simple as you you get Marvin Harrison you get Quinion Mitchell and then you wait to see which defensive tackle falls and who knows you might be able to slide in and get Johnny Newton around the first 10 picks of the, the second round 
That's an A+. Plus. I don't care if you take Yosemite Sam and Elmer Fudd <laughs> with the, the two picks in the hundreds. Yes. I don't care. Because you're taking dart throws on the back end of any draft, and this one is way worse. Mm-hmm. So if I can move around and get three legit pieces, that's going to be an A in this class. And and Arizona is the team that is the best situated to do that. Now, they are not the only team that is situated to do that. There is another one that we feel pretty confident are going to walk out of this draft with a quarterback, and they have a couple pieces as well. We got to take a quick commercial break. After we come back, I'll tell you who that team is and why I feel like they need to make a move for one very specific guy. It's not the biggest need that the team has, but I think it could get the most out of their new young quarterback. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. At Progressive, we know money can't buy you happiness, but money did help you buy an RV, which means an excuse from working Saturday with your insufferable coworker, Dave. So money is helping you listen to birds chirp instead of Dave chirping about how his toddler is fluent in three languages. And it's also why you'll be smelling pine trees in the air, not Dave's tuna melt reheating in a microwave. So save money by bundling your RV or boat insurance with home or auto from Progressive and buy more happiness or something close to it. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and other insurers not available in all states. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for is finally here. It's Freddie Prinze Jr. and Jeff Dye back in the ring for an all-new season of the Wrestling with Freddie podcast. That's right, Freddie. Get ready as we highlight the most jaw-dropping matches, dissect the fiercest feuds, and uncover the latest twists and turns in the world of pro wrestling. And we obviously can't wait to hear from you, the Federation. Without you guys, none of this is possible. Listen to Wrestling with Freddie on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. Did you know that feeling sluggish or weighed down could be a sign that your digestive system isn't working at its best? Taking Metamucil every day can help. Metamucil fiber powders help promote your daily digestive health using a plant-based fiber called psyllium. The gelling action of this special fiber traps and removes waste so you can feel lighter and more energetic. Metamucil, promoting digestive health for a better you. Learn more at metamucil.com. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. These products are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. Are you prepared for an emergency or disaster? Because it's not a matter of if, but when. Don't find yourself saying, I'll trust water bottles and a flashlight to save the day, but I'll be proved wrong. With a tornado approaching, I'll realize that I like a wheelchair accessible shelter. When the floodwaters rise, I'll be up in the attic with 20 cans of beans. It's a recipe for disaster. Let's prepare so we all have a better story to tell. Get started at ready.gov slash older adults. Brought to you by FEMA and the Ad Council. They're modern day con artists, and they're the focus of Creating a Con, a true crime anthology podcast. Season one spotlights Ray Trapani and his tech startup scam, endorsed by DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather, and built on empty promises and millions from built investors. If someone's like, oh, what's your best way of making money? I don't think start a business. I'm like, oh, we should start some sort of scheme, and I can't help it. Listen to Creating a Con on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search Creating a Con. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. The Sportsocracy. These two are just dumb a bag of hammers. It is ESPN Asheville, the Sportsocracy, taking another way or another day off of the draft vent calendar as the draft of the season 
winds down to the big day. It's on the 25th, Detroit, Michigan. We will be there live covering it all for you Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of that week. Tank has to put on a suit. Tank has to get on an airplane. A lot of things I've never seen Tank do. Yeah, yeah. It's going to be, uh, you know, it's time to time to grow up, right? Time for Baby Bird to spread his wings. <laughs> You looked like a baby bird when you did that. I did. I did a little, a, a little I was, flutter with the with the hands there. It's just, oh, I'm going to call you baby bird in a derogatory <laughs> way for him. Uh, Listen here, baby bird. Yeah, five or six years. That's, that's going to be one of those things you regret you said for a long time. <laughs> uh, draft trades that we would like to see for the upcoming um, selections. What do you got? This one's kind of a caveat okay. of something would have to happen, but in this scenario, it does. Let's say Roma Dunze falls to 10. The Jets take him. Brock Bowers goes into full-on free fall. And what team likes trading down more than any team in the NFL? The Seattle Seahawks. Mm -hmm. I don't think there is as much... I, I think every mock I've seen for them has Troy Fontano to them at 16. I don't think they have that much competition for him. I have never thought they did. I can tell you definitively of the teams that I'm the closest to, I don't know one that has him ahead of Graham Barton as a guard. Now, if you think he can play tackle, okay, mm -hmm. then maybe we can talk. Right. Because I don't know a team that feels like Barton can. What if Washington traded up with Seattle to go get Brock Bowers at 16? I would be drunk in love. You'd give up 36, 40, and probably your second round pick next year. And yes, that is a lot of assets. That's a lot of assets. But yes, that is a really good safety blanket for Jaden Daniels. Yes. And right now, do you know who their third receiver is? Olamide Zacchaeus. Uh, I got Terry McLaurin that I believe in. Uh, Jahan Dotson, who... And I hope you get back to rookie year, Johan Dotson, because last year you were not good at football. Mm -hmm. But now I had Brock Bowers, and that changes a lot for me. That it does. The only the bad thing for but me the, about the the but, but the value works on that. It does it's two top second round picks to well, it's thirty six and forty, so you got two top picks in the two top eight picks in the second round, right. and you would probably have to give up your second rounder next year. Mm -hmm. The the draft chart works out, but we know there's a premium on picks in the top 15 or 16. Yes. And it might not be quite that much, but this is a class where if you don't have an A-graded player there at 16, this is one of the, the issues I ran into them, why I kept giving them Jackson Powers Johnson. He was the only A I had left that fit a position of need in any way. Because mm -hmm. I like their two tackles. So if J.C. Latham is there, that doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me, unless you're planning on playing him guard. So I kept running into this just going, man, I wish Seattle had a trade partner that made sense. The more I looked at Washington, the more I, I, I just can't get over the, I really wish Brock Bowers could find some way to be mm. in that offense because I think he would help Jaden Daniels a lot. I think he would help any quarterback a lot. Now that's on the assumption, uh, assumption that the – Jets would pass him at 10 if Roma Dunze was on the board, and I think they would. It would be hard to pass that up if Rome was on the board. But if he doesn't do it, I feel like somebody's going to. Maybe Washington is the one. But They've every, been terrible but tight I, end But forever. I feel like you get outside of that top 10. He and, miss, if, he's not, if he doesn't hit on the Jets, Brock Bowers will go into full-on free fall. And see, that's what I was getting ready to say was I feel like if he doesn't hit with the Jets at 10, then that starts the frenzy of who's going to get into that next five picks. Well, you're never going to have a frenzy over a tight end. You're just not. Especially one that's not a good blocker. I mean, it'd be one thing if this was Tony Gonzalez. It's not. This is another pass catcher in the really greatest pass catcher though? draft ever. Do I really care that much? Though, yes. That he can't block? Yes. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Hey, look, I love Brock Bowers. I think he's one of the best handful of, of players in this class. 
my official rankings will come out next week as well. Mm-hmm. But I don't see teams getting into a frenzy over a tight end. I just, I don't buy it. Huh. I've seen this too many times. Seemingly every time a high-level tight end prospect, a top 10, think Vernon Davis, mm-hmm. Eric Ebron, TJ Hawkinson, Kyle Pitts. Yep. Every time we've ever had one of those, I found one team that made all the sense in the world, and invariably that team has taken them. But if they hadn't, I don't know where they would have fallen. Mm-hmm. Ebron is the one I'm, that I was always stuck on because the Lions took him, I think, at 10. Had they not, there's a possibility he would have fallen out of the first round because there were a bunch of teams after Detroit that they're not going to take a tight end. Mm-hmm. Don't care how much you like him. They're not going to do it. This is a different scenario because he's a much higher graded prospect. Mm-hmm. But I don't know that it's that different. He gets past the Jets. Cincinnati doesn't start making calls to get up from 18. Cincinnati has a couple holes that need to be filled. I'm not going to tell you they wouldn't make a call. Mm -hmm. I just don't know that they're going to make the final call of, yeah, we have to go. We have to get that guy. Right. Okay. I feel like that makes makes sense. Because the possibility would be really expensive. I mean, you got to look at who the teams you would be dealing with. Mm-hmm. You would be looking at potentially a spurned Minnesota and a uh, Minnesota's not moving if a quarterback is even in the ballpark of that pick. Mm-hmm. And there will be one there. Of course, 11 could end up being the New England Patriots. and I don't know. I don't to, think. <laughs> to me, that would be, ah, that'd make a lot of sense in the world for New England to go no get doubt. Brock Bowers at 11. It would. It definitely would. So I don't necessarily think. I don't necessarily think if it was New England, that would be as realistic. I also don't think Arizona, if that's who trades down, they're not taking Brock Bauer. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I get Denver, it. if they get stuck there, I don't see a path that they're doing it. Oh, I don't know. Sean, oh, I, Sean, I do Sean, know. Sean Payton likes the tight end. Yeah, he's got two of them he likes right now, Greg Dulcich and Adam Troutman. He's got his guys. Mm, well, that's true. I mean, if you go to DraftKings Sportsbook and look at team to select Brock Bowers, I think there's a better chance of the Asheville tourists taking Brock Bowers than the Denver Broncos. Really? They are way low on that list. Hmm. Interesting. I figured that would be a, that'd be a little higher probability than that. It's all locked in on quarterback. Yeah. I mean, if Brock Bowers is there and Bo Nix is there and they can't move down, they will take Bo Nix. Didn't say they should. Right. Said they would. Yeah. Okay. Then you get into the Raiders, who have already invested pretty high level capital on a tight end. Uh, New Orleans, who has way bigger needs. They get to Indianapolis. They have four tight ends on the roster. Mm-hmm. Three of whom they drafted themselves. It gets hard to figure out where that spot's going to be. I don't know that there's a team that could take him until Seattle. He's one of the more polarizing prospects in this entire class to me. Polarizing? Because he's so good. I don't know a soul that doesn't agree with that. It's also really hard for me to find places that he's going to land. Mm-hmm. I saw one of those. I can't remember the guy's name, but he does like analytics for the draft. And the Jets had like a 91% probability of ending up with Brock Bowers. I don't know that I've ever seen a number that high. Outside of number one. Right. I mean, I think Caleb Williams was like 98.5. But sometimes it just makes too much sense. And the Jets are in a prime position to take him. Mm-hmm. Because it's not a premium position. You're still you're, you're going to get one of the top three players talent-wise in this draft. That's just something that I don't see uh, Joe Douglas passing on. You know, I don't see I, I don't see Aaron signing off on any other pick there. Well, maybe a tackle. One of the top tackles is still there. Okay, but other than that, that's Brock Bauer's spot. You're in the sportsocracy, CSPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. Um, continuing with the draft trade conversation uh before we do that we had a question in the 
YouTube chats from Muhammad Abdi, which is a name I don't think I've ever seen before. I hope I said that correctly. He asked, who's the best prospect I've ever scouted? In terms of just sheer grade, it's Andrew Luck. Because he got the surge from quarterback from being a quarterback. Uh, and he was just, I mean, he was damn near flawless. In terms of who is the best period prospect that I've ever graded? I remember the Boses were really high. I would have to go back and look through my notes to see if there's if there's one I'm forgetting. Mm-hmm. I know Nick Bosa was insanely high. I know Quinn and Williams was insanely high. But I think there's there, I feel like there's somebody. That, I think I'm missing something. Let me go, let's take a commercial break so I can go back through and look just mm-hmm. to make sure. I'm so locked in on this class that it's hard <laughs> for me to remember the last. 13 years yeah yeah we'll uh, take a break and i'll i'll dig into that yeah. uh highest grade ever for jeremy green in his uh in his years of looking at the prospects in the 2024 or in all of the drafts but mainly focusing on the 2024 nfl draft which is coming up in just two short weeks and we will be there with all of your coverage live here on espn Asheville and the sportsocracy.com this is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Milder days ahead with 80 degree temperatures possible by the end of the weekend as high pressure is finally going to settle back in. Wind advisory and gusty winds this afternoon, close to 60 degrees with that wind gusting 40 plus in spots and maybe a couple of showers right through your Friday evening. So grab the rain gear if you are going to be heading out. We'll break up the clouds late, still quite breezy to windy overnight. Lows in the low 40s, sunny, breezy, and upper 60s on Saturday. Sunday sunshine up near 80. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by eBay Motors. eBay Motors is here for the ride with the parts you need at the prices you want. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they're guaranteed to fit your ride the first time, every time, or your money back. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Hey, if you're listening to me right now, I have one thing every business needs most, attention. Think about it. We swipe and scroll past stuff all day. But when we're driving, cooking, working out, we're also listening. That's the magic of audio at iHeart. We're in your next customer's ears while they're living life and listening, just like you are right now. So get your customers to listen up today using radio, digital, and podcasts. Call 844-AD-HELP-5. That's 844-AD-HELP-5. This spring, check carpets off your spring cleaning list with Zero Res Carpet and Air Duct Cleaning. Mention ESPN Asheville and you'll get three rooms of carpet cleaned for only $129. Book online at ZeroResAsheville.com. They're modern-day con artists, and they're the focus of Creating a Con, a true crime anthology podcast. Season 1 spotlights Ray Trapani and his tech startup scam, endorsed by DJ Khaled and Floyd Mayweather, and built on empty promises and millions from built investors. If someone's like, oh, what's your best way of making money? I don't think start a business. I'm like, oh, we should start some sort of scheme, and I can't help it. Listen to Creating a Con on America's number one podcast network, iHeart. Open your free iHeart app and search Creating a Con. Join the MB Haynes family and enjoy excellent benefits, including medical, dental, and life insurance, 401k, employee stock ownership program, holidays, and paid vacation. MB Haynes has an immediate need for HVAC commercial service techs, plumbing, and electrical technicians. If you're ready to make a career change that positively impacts your workday and your time off, go to mbhaines.com slash careers to view available positions and apply. That's mbhaines.com slash careers. MB Haynes, quality, commitment, character. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern Hospitality Tech. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828 774 
888-888-6343 or clarissaselleswnc at gmail.com. On the weird scale, there's Vegas, there's Florida, and there's Asheville. Let's get weird, Asheville. It is ESPN Asheville. This is the Sportsocracy. Let's get weird. How about, um, ooh, here's a story on oral surgery in prison. An oral surgeon who guided a prison guard through the extraction of an inmate's teeth in 2020. Let me say that again. An oral surgeon who let a prison guard do a tooth extraction in prison in October of 2020 um, will not have a criminal record. That's why this did not end up in the crimes section of today's program. Dr. Louis Borget received an absolute discharge, which in these court terms here means basically he's guilty of something, but there's not really we're not really convicting him of anything he was charged with assault after he permitted a corrections officer to extract an inmate's teeth while the incident was recorded by another correctional officer on his phone that is probably the weirdest scenario i have ever heard of guess the guess the guy just wanted to do it he just Hey, we got to take this guy's teeth out. Hey, won't you let me do it? Yeah, that'll be a good idea. I'll just tell you what to do. This is an easy surgery. You can get, <laughs> you can get this done no problem. I would not. I would not be down for that. And I would definitely be filing some sort of a major, major lawsuit if the doctor of the prison allowed someone untrained to pull my teeth out. I have two stories. Which one would you prefer me tell? I have one about Morgan Wallen. I have one about O.J. Simpson. <laughs> well, the Morgan Wallen one is him throwing the chair off the balcony. Well, we all know that, but yeah. there's, uh, you know what? I'll tell them both. Okay, why not? That was at Chiefs. That's Eric Church's bar yes. in Nashville. Yes. Well, there's a new phenomenon that is happening at Chiefs. Yokels are showing up to see the chair that he threw. Nice. It's now becoming like a tourist attraction yes. to see the chair that Morgan Wallen threw As off the should. bar. As it should. They that should bronze the that thing. thing and put it above the bar. Why? It's a chair. Mm-hmm. I sat in the chair Morgan Wallen threw. Yep. Awesome. I'll, I will never understand photo ops and things like that. Hey, look, this is me <laughs> sitting in a chair, but Morgan Wallen threw it. Is there anything identifiable about the chair? No. no. How do you know that's the chair he actually threw? Well, because they told me. Mm-hmm. Government tells you birds are real, too. <laughs> Believe that, don't you? O.J. Simpson died yesterday. Sorry, I'm not sad about it, and I'm not going to be. But I do find it really ironic that on the day that O.J. Simpson dies, the the vehicle that he made famous, the Ford Bronco, recalled almost 45,000 vehicles. That's one of the most ironic timing things I think I've ever seen in my life. That on the day O.J. Simpson passes away, they have cracked fuel injector, injectors that could lead to a fire. So the day of death of one of the great dumpster fires of the last 25 years, the car that he drove <laughs> in the most dumpster fire event of his life. <laughs> you see where I'm headed with this? Yeah, yeah. By the way, can we stop being weird about that? What? I, this is a little tangent. Mm-hmm. I've heard... Everybody from the White House to national sports telecasters, it's okay to just say he was a jack wagon. Okay? Mm-hmm. Like, that's totally fine. That's called being honest. You can be disingenuous and go, oh, it's such a sad day that O.J. Simpson died. No, a sad day was 30 years ago when he killed two people. Allegedly. Bingo. Uh, oh, wait, it's not allegedly because he was actually found liable for it in a court of law. So, that, that's... Can't get me for slander because you were convicted of it. <laughs> no, uh, no criminal conviction. Yeah, you weren't though. criminally convicted, but you were found liable sure. by a group of your peers. Yes. So yes, yeah, a, a sad day was the day that Nicole Brown Simpson and and Ron mm-hmm. Goldman died mm-hmm. because they were savagely killed. 
O.J. Simpson was a 76-year-old man that died of cancer. He lived a very full life. Uh, and he spent some of it incarcerated because he couldn't stop doing crimes. Mm-hmm. So, sorry if I didn't cry in my beer last night. Yeah. And if you don't like that, you know where you can send that. Uh, <laughs> that you send it to me, frankly, you send it to my email. I'm still trying to figure out who these people are that are getting upset. Disingenuous people that feel like they have to. Sure. That, that's exactly what it is. Sure. That's everybody, exactly what it is. Yeah, everybody tiptoeing around, uh, around the subject. I haven't found one normal person. Who will tiptoe around the subject? Yeah, I'm not tiptoeing around anything. <laughs> no. You are a deplorable human being, mm-hmm. and now you've passed away. Mm-hmm. It is sad for your family that you passed away. Mm-hmm. That is the furthest I'm going with that. Yep. Yep. And I mean, if you want me to lie to you, then you're listening to the wrong guy, because I'm not going to do it. <laughs> uh, all right, let's uh, let's 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 get into our new series here. Hold up, before we okay. do that, i got to yep. pay off what we, we ended the last segment with. Uh, Muhammad Abdi asked me who are the highest rated prospects I've oh, ever yeah, evaluated. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, the answer to that is Miles Garrett and Quentin Nelson. It was in back-to-back years in, in 17 and 18. They were both 98s. Mm-hmm. I have never had a 99, and I never will have a perfect 100 unless um, He-Man enters the draft. But those are the only two 98s I've ever had. I've had a slew of 97s. Mm-hmm. Patrick Peterson... Um, I'm trying to remember now the list. Uh, Nick Bosa, Quinn and Williams. There was another one. I just pulled the list mm-hmm. up and the I, I got talking about Miles OJ Garrett. Simpson. No, Miles no, Garrett was ninety eight. That was the ninety eight. Uh, there was another one, but I can't yeah. remember. What it was. Yeah, but uh, the two highest I've ever had were Miles Garrett and Quentin Nelson. And the two highest in this class, for what it's worth, are Marvin Harrison Jr. and Joe Alt, and they are both ninety fours. Mm-hmm. Uh, we always like to look back and see, and, 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 you know, when the draft is over, go back and look at the draft classes, who did the best, all of that. We like to talk about who are the best drafting franchises in history. I wanted to take a more wider look at the draft over the last 40 years. Coming up with my top fives for the top five draft picks of each and every NFL franchise over the last 40 NFL drafts. We're going to do each and every team leading up to the 2024 NFL draft on the 25th of this month in Detroit, Michigan. And first one we get into here. Let's do let's do the Cleveland Browns. I found this one not to be too not too difficult. Baker cause, Mayfield. Because they haven't drafted all that well. Let's be honest, over the years. At Sports Tank ESPN. What? I Cleveland Brown fans that just want to throw oh, hate sure. at you. Indeed. Go I ahead. I have a feeling I'll get at least three or four of oh, what please. I just said about O.J. Simpson, so if I feel you, like you should get one. I was going to say, if you come up with the examples of the great, great draft picks that you've had over the last 40 years, please send them to me because I couldn't really find them. <laughs> you do have some high marks. My number one draft pick for the Cleveland Browns over the last 40 years is Joe Thomas. Very simple. He's one of the one of the greatest of all time. Took him with the third pick in the 2007 draft. And then you got to throw in Miles Garrett. 2017 draft, he was number one overall pick. Those are those are pretty easy. Then there's Alex Mack. 21st pick overall, 2009. Then this is where it got hard for me. Because I'm looking over going, I don't really know that there's a great pick in here anywhere. Bernie Kosar in 1985 in the supplemental draft. Oof. And then Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden would have been up there pretty high. Number seven, dra- number seven pick in the 2010 draft. That's my top five. Is there anybody that I missed? That you can fully evaluate yet? Ah, probably not. No. And there might be some young guys that we think are, are going to develop into something. I'm very high on Jeremiah Wusu Gorma. Yeah. And in terms of value, he's up there pretty high. Mm-hmm. Taking him in the third round? Is that where they got him? Third round? Uh, 52 overall. Okay. 20 in the second round. You did the be- you did the good side of this. I did the bad side. Okay. And mine was way harder than yours. 
because you struggled to get to five. Yes. I struggled to stop mine at five. <laughs> to stop at the worst picks? Uh, Tim Couch, Baker Mayfield, Courtney Brown. That's three that you took at one mm-hmm. that were all train wrecks. And yes, there was one that was worse than the other two, and it was the one that wasn't the quarterback because he couldn't play to save his life. The harder part was who are the others? Because you got some, you got some choices here for sure. Mm-hmm. And you got Cameron Cameron Wembley, was a Florida State player that they took. I don't know, ten ish years ago. Mm-hmm. The ones that I nestled on were Corey Coleman. That's a good one. And then it was a almost dead tie for me, Trent Richardson. Yes. But you got to remember, they traded Trent Richardson. And they did get some good capital. They got a first rounder yeah, for him. Yeah. Which is still, to this day, the fact that anybody looked at Trent Richardson and went, hey, we'll, we'll do it. Let him come be our problem. And then he ballooned up like a beluga whale. Mm-hmm. Uh, and Justin Gilbert. You know what the saddest part of what I just said is? Every pick I just made was all modern Browns. Yes. Half of your franchise. I didn't even have to look at because I went, those five are going to be practically impossible to beat. <laughs> All of those have been since what, 99. Since 99? Because they, they, they were oh, out of right. league you, 96, 97, 98. I was going to say, you came back in 99. Tim Couch in there. I mean, and trust me, there were some, there were some less than awesome ones in there. The Tommy Vardells of the world. Cleveland Browns are just bad at drafting. No, they're getting much better. Uh, yes. That's, this is not an indictment on you right now. This is, again, the last 40 years. Some teams are not hard to come up with their best draft picks. Uh, for the New York Jets, it was two years ago. Best draft picks in the history of the New York Jets. Just see 2022 NFL draft. <laughs> just all of them. All, yep. Take those top four picks. Move right on along. Yes. yes. Um, let's do an NFC team next. And oh, let's go with the Atlanta Falcons. Oh. Team closer to home. Uh, Deion Sanders better be real high in Number this. one. He's number one. Number five pick in the 1989 draft. Which I will say, you're not going value. You're just going best. These are best draft picks. Value can play into it in in, in some cases, but some of these you can't you can't say like I don't know Jesse Tuggle was the best draft pick over Deion Sanders. Stop that. I mean Drake London should be up here pretty high. Drake. <laughs> no, no, it's way too early to to name him one of the best draft picks of that franchise. Well, as I mean, well. you, you spit in the face of uh, uh, the rest of the industry. You, you rode with me, and I don't think you've regretted it yet. To me, number two was uh, the third pick in the 2008 draft, Matt Ryan. Best quarterback in the history of the franchise. Mm-hmm. So. Julio Jones is three. So, I would have had that, too, because you had to trade up to make that happen. Yes. I can see that argument. The the value in that. Mm-hmm. Because you took more of a swing there. Matt Ryan fell right in their lap. There was nothing any idiot could have taken Matt Ryan. Yes. Number six pick was Julio Jones, 2011. Then my four, I went with Michael Vick. (laughs) I think you're smoking crack. You don't think that's a good pick? No. I actually was debating if I was going to have it on my list. Oh, my God. You do realize Michael Vick wasn't good for the Falcons, right? Like, you get that. That's uh, He was popular. He... Again, he may not have been stats wise or wins wise good for that team. Uh, uh, he was the face of that franchise and was the most marketable athlete the city of Atlanta had since Deion. Dominic Sanders. Wilkins. Uh, they've had several that were pretty marketable. Mm-hmm. I also don't really care how marketable you were. So he had a ride at Six Flags. I, I just I, I want to go down the truth trolley here of what you just said. Yes. So stats wise, he wasn't very good, and he didn't lead to many wins. So what the hell else matters? I took you number one. Mm-hmm. I had to trade up to go get you at number one. Gave a franchise that traded out of it 
the best quarterback in the history of the franchise. That's a disaster. Oh, but he was fun to play with on Madden. Well, whoop the damn do. He was terrible in Atlanta. He stayed wow. hurt. You had to replace it. He was there, what, six years? He was there six years. He played 16 games exactly one time, and he was above 500 three times. Mm-hmm. By one game in two of those. He won 11 games in twenty in 2004. Other than that, he was one and one, eight, six, and one, three and one, yay, but he got hurt. Eight and seven and seven and nine. I'm good. <laughs> I'll pass. I'll pass. But he sold a lot of t-shirts. He damn right he Sweet. did. Sweet. <laughs> good lord. If we it's were the tra- best thing that franchise had in the nineteen since nineteen ninety. That's really more of an indictment on the franchise than it is. No hey, doubt. good for you. No doubt. Yeah, I, wow. I can't. I can't ride with you on on Michael Vick. Wow. He was a train wreck. I mean, it didn't end well. That's clear. Well, yeah, I mean, oh, yeah, I didn't even include that part of your starting quarterback was sent to federal <laughs> prison. That's typically a bad Still sign. Still give me another one, though. Oh, another one that yeah, was better than yeah, Michael Give Vick? me another one. Patrick Kearney didn't even think about it. Didn't even think about it. I believe it was the year before. His first-round pick. He was a really good football player. Mm-hmm. Well, he did sell many T-shirts. Uh, no, but he was really good. Oh, uh, Keith Brooking. One of the best players in the history of the franchise. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jesse Tuggle, who you made fun of just a few minutes ago. Uh, off the, I, I'm going. I'm going to have to dig in now. Oh, Jamal Anderson, who took you to a Super Bowl and you drafted him in the seventh round. I don't think that one's even debatable. You talking about marketable? He created the most famous thing your franchise has ever done. The dirty bird was Jamal Anderson. No, it wasn't. Yes, it was. That was his touchdown dance. And everybody joined him in the end zone for the little dee 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 dee. And then he went to a Super Bowl. That was Dion's, wasn't it? No, it was Jamal Anderson the year they went to the Super Bowl. Mm. Dion was in Dallas by then, or San Francisco, or wherever else he bounced to. Yeah, the Dirty Bird celebration was invented by Dion. Sanders. Okay, it may have been invented by Dion. <laughs> it was made legitimately famous by Jamal Anderson. As a matter of fact, I may be wrong on this. I think he has that trademarked. I might be wrong on that. Mm-hmm. I know when you try to book him, it's in his, uh, the, what is that called? I don't know. I tried I to have him on the show. About. That's the only reason that I'm so dogmatic on this. Mm-hmm. I think it's in the, I can't think of the word. It's like the bio writer thing. Oh, the, he's he the one that made the bio. dirty bird famous. Ah, gotcha. Dion did a lot of dances. Jamal mm-hmm. Anderson did one. And it just so happened it was the year they went to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, you lost me on Michael Vick. <laughs> I, I think you're out of your mind. <laughs> Writer, thank you, Patrick Holt. It's, it's the writer as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the 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 final one is a new guy because I couldn't find a better one. AJ Terrell. He had AJ AJ Terrell, but didn't have Jamal Anderson. No, I don't understand. You're gonna have to explain that one to me. A corner that, if I'm not mistaken, the entire time he's been on this team, they've never won more than nine games. You took over the MVP of the team that took them to the only Super Bowl. Okay. Yep. Your list, not mine. That's one good year. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> he didn't have Andre Risen on that list either, which is shocking. Andre Risen. When was he drafted? I don't know that they drafted him though. He was somewhere else before he was in Atlanta. I th- Arizona, wasn't it? Mm, I don't know the answer. He was somewhere else. They didn't draft him. So, okay. That, he was drafted by the Colts in 1989. Wow. I knew that. I think I knew that. Traded to the uh, Falcons in 90. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. Because he was, he was with the Colts for a year. They traded him to Atlanta. And Atlanta did the exact same thing with Brett Favre to Green Bay the year after? Was it the year after or two years after? It was after? the year after. 1991. I did write that down because that was... I mean, that was the best pick 
you probably ever made the in the franchise's it didn't history. didn't benefit you. Right, exactly. In large didn't... part, the same thing I can say about Deion Sanders. <laughs> yeah, you didn't get anything out of that. Oh, yeah. I mean, if we're drafting the best players that you ever drafted, then yes, they are definitely there. Yes. The only the only problem is to do squat for you. I'm Who? locked. I'm I'm locked on the Jamal Anderson thing. I can't I can't make that make sense in my head. Yeah, I just didn't think about it. I guess I don't know. Jamal yeah, but then Anderson. you defended it. It'd be one thing if you didn't think about it, and then you went, "Oh, okay, yeah, you're you're 100 right." What? I, you and I look at this completely differently. Uh, Atlanta, another team that is really easy to come up with bad picks for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'd be remiss if I didn't say uh, also receiving votes was Michael Vick, who was on his list. <clears throat> you, you traded up to get the guy. Yeah, which you should have done. I don't. Uh, that's another topic for another day. <laughs> uh, Jamal, the other Jamal Anderson would be on my list. I don't know if the, the Jamal front all, Anderson. Uh, yeah, Jamal two A's Anderson. Yes, three A's. He was horror awful. Uh, Sean Weatherspoon would be pretty high on that list. I'm trying to find a way to not have Vic Beasley this high, but he has to be Mm -hmm. because that was terrible. Those are probably the the highest of the high side for me. Tack McKinley deserves to be mentioned. That's probably the worst of the first rounders. Atlanta had a good stretch where they didn't really I, I guess that's why I'm so I guess that's why I rail on Michael Vick so much because they actually went through a nice period where they didn't miss on first round picks and it was basically the entire time Vick was there and they were still bad. Mm-hmm. When I trade for a quarterback, if I keep hitting ones, I expect you to at least be making the playoffs. And he didn't do that. No. You're in the sportocracy and this is CSPN Asheville 92.9 FM 880 AM and 1400. What are you doing? I'm training for the new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs. I could get a chance to dash through a warehouse full of prizes. That explains the shopping cart. Plus, I could win up to $2 million in cash. And that explains the tuxedo. I'm chafing. Feel the rush with new Ultimate Dash Scratch-Offs from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds of winning are 1 in 3.78. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. Give me the VIN.com is paying top dollar for your car, truck, sports car, exotic. I told my buyers, let's get them bought. Right now is the time to go. Sell us your car. Give me the VIN.com. So easy you can. Join us for the second annual Earth Day 5K presented by Pine Gate Renewables on Saturday, April 20th in Asheville. This isn't just a race. It's a chance to leave a positive footprint in our community with the nonprofit Green Built Alliance. The second annual Earth Day 5K starts at 10 a.m. at the Outpost, right beside Carrier Park. Register at greenbuilt.org slash earthday 5K presented by Pine Gate Renewables, an Asheville-based developer and owner-operator of utility-scale solar and energy storage projects across the United States. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality, fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high-quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop customer apparel shops we're back counting down to kickoff let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with beast unleashed presented by monster brewing number one beat the heat unleash the beast with bold familiar flavors zero caffeine and zero sugar number two running the option there's four to choose from white haze peach perfect scary berries and my personal favorite mean green and number three at six percent abv max protect always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over beast unleashed available at your local retailer 
This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Milder days ahead with 80 degree temperatures possible by the end of the weekend as high pressure is finally going to settle back in. Wind advisory and gusty winds this afternoon, close to 60 degrees with that wind gusting 40 plus in spots and maybe a couple of showers right through your Friday evening. So grab the rain gear if you are going to be heading out. We'll break up the clouds late, still quite breezy to windy overnight. Lows in the low 40s, sunny, breezy, and upper 60s on Saturday. Sunday sunshine up near 80. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by ExpressPros.com. If you're ready for a new job, let Express Employment Professionals help you. Express is already hiring for summer jobs in a variety of industries. Job seekers never pay a fee at Express. Go to ExpressPros.com to find your location. That's ExpressPros.com. From the Ingalls Studios, this is ESPN Asheville, WPEK, W225CJ Fairview, WMXF Waynesville, and iHeart Radio Station. I like to be active, and as you get older, I know it because I am older. You're more prone to injury, and I could not get rid of the pain. QC Kinetics patient Diane Richardson talking about how a hiking injury left her in awful pain. No one wants to live in pain. I certainly don't want to live in pain. I don't have time for pain. Diane had heard about regenerative medicine, so she called QC Kinetics and started treatment right away, and the results were incredible. I couldn't believe it. I honestly was skeptical, but the pain went from a 10 to a 0. QC Kinetics is the nation's leader in using natural biologics healing properties from your own body to restore and repair damaged joint tissue. There's no surgery, no drugs, and no downtime. The result was phenomenal. I mean, I was not feeling any pain. I'm able to do everything that I want to do. If you have pain from arthritis or injury, this may be the solution you're looking for. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. It was a game changer. Call QC Kinetics, 828-333-9517. That's 828-333-9517. 828-333-9517. Go check out the all-new Apple Tree Advantage at the Apple Tree Automotive Superstore. It's your home for brand-new Hondas, brand-new Acuras, and a wide selection of local trade-ins. It's the all-new Apple Tree Advantage at the Apple Tree Automotive Superstore, online at appletreesuperstore.com and located I-26 at Airport Road, Asheville. The Sportsocracy. It fires me up, man. I love it. Say it one more time. The Sportsocracy. Shake it back! Beer City's best sports talk. It is gross. Just earlier. They are mature, actually. You just have to get to know them better. Your lunchtime dose of dumbassery. Live from the Ingalls studio. We are back in the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, 1400. The Sportsocracy heard everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. We're seeing everywhere on YouTube. Just go to thesportsocracy.com, click the live video link, subscribe to the channel. That way you can join us in the chat each and every day. Get your thoughts in on whatever we're discussing. Throw your picks in for uh, all of the listing that happens here on the pro. I love lists. I can't get away from lists. I oh, love drafts. I love all of the things. Uh, in the break, I settled the, uh, the the dirty bird debate. We were both kind of right. Yeah, you were right. The, I'll give it. The, I mean, the term right. dirty birds was coined by Deion Sanders. Yes. The dance was Jamal Anderson. There you go. And by the way, his uh, uh, the agency profile for him his name is jamal dirty bird anderson <laughs> i knew that was stuck in my head for a reason i remember yes. the dance very well yes yes i'm also friends with a guy that was on that team mm-hmm. and <clears throat> that's where that probably needs to stop it's pretty good i mean he, he, really great output for a seventh round draft pick exactly four thousand yard season i think when you told me this concept i thought it was going to be more into greatest draft selections no, which would get you know into me. value and no you know me i'm not diving into your sixth round draft oh, pick from 1998 bet you i know a guy that will <laughs> bet you i just playing my weekend let's go exactly jeremy's fat keister sitting on the couch with a domestic light in every draft profile <laughs> i've ever done it'll look like a john nash from a beautiful mind <laughs> real fast <laughs> We do love uh, lists. We love the draft. We love drafty things. That's why every day, top of the third hour of the program, we do the daily draft. And today's daily draft, Jeremy, uh, you want to do best fits? Yes. With your favorite fit of draft prospect with a team. And you, I'll let you choose the, the caveat here. Mm-hmm. 
If you want to take first rounders, if you want to just leave it open ended, we, however you want to do it. I mean, we can. I have a hundred of these, so you're oh, I'm sure you're, you're you not going to hurt my list. I I'm, promise you. I'm I'm sure I'm not. Uh, <laughs> let's um, no caveats. We'll just we'll just okay. we'll just open, right, well, I'll give you open the it first up pick. for the floor. I know you're probably not going to take the obvious ones to help me out because you're a gentleman and that's what you do. I do. Uh, <laughs> Um, so best fits here for the draft. Um, well, I'm going to take your team off the board because I think Brock Bowers is, is just a perfect fit. Oh, I, I mean, think he'll fit in well with your offense. Obviously everyone will love to have him as part of it. And I think he falls right in line. He should be coming off the board in the top 10. Well, I mean, I do look forward to doing karate with him in the garage when we become best friends when he's a tight end for my team. But, and I'll tell you, that wouldn't have come back around to you. Mm -hmm. Because I look at the way that Jet offense is built, and it was, it, he is a very nice fit. The only the only caveat that I would put on that is Roma Dunze is too. Mm -hmm. Because you put him on the opposite side of Mike Williams, you got Garrett Wilson running out of the slot. <laughs> Sorry, I can't say that without laughing <laughs> and just going, I know how this is going to go. And it's not going to be fun for opposing defenses because he kills people out of the slot. Right. But then you add in Brock Bowers, and you just can't really – you can't double up on Garrett Wilson. And I think they'll add somebody else on the outside. They're all in with Aaron Rodgers, just hoping you, you can keep him upright. Brock's an elite tight end prospect. Yes. And, and in this – he fits nicely with the Jets. He does. I'm trying not to get too excited about it because every time I get excited about something with the Jets, they find a way, way to Kyle Brady me. And I'm going to be in the room, so I don't want to go, what are you doing? <laughs> really loud when they're like, okay, people can hear me. Right. He is not my favorite He's not your favorite fit. He is not my favorite fit. Okay. And my my favorite one is, you said I wasn't going to take the obvious ones. You're half right. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to take, I'm not going to take the obvious one minus the one I'm getting ready to take. It's Joe Alt with the Tennessee Titans. I, I heard our, our guys, Connor Rogers and, and Trevor Sikama, they do a tandem mock drafts throughout the, the process, which is a brilliant idea. And I, I don't remember who was on with them for the last one. And they were talking about how Tennessee kind of has gotten screwed in this draft process because it's such a foregone conclusion that that's where they go, that we go through mock drafts and just go, Tennessee Titans, Joe Alt. Okay, we've talked about that 43 times, so we're just moving on. And they're 100% right. Every time we've done Tennessee, it's just, it's Joe Alt. As soon as Calvin Ridley went there, took receiver off the board. But it doesn't change the fact that the reason it took it off the board is because that's exactly what they need. I think Joe Alt is as good of a tackle prospect as I've ever seen. I could count on one hand the number I've ever evaluated that I thought were better than him. And you're going to have him fall in your lap at seven for two receivers who, yes, I do like both receivers, but this is a franchise left tackle that just drops right in your lap that's as good as it gets okay and then i have so many here that it's it's almost difficult for me to pick which one i want to go with but i will go quinion mitchell with the las vegas raiders because you give me that front now with Christian Wilkins, Max Crosby, uh, Tyree Wilson that's drafted last year, Malcolm Kuntz, who is criminally underrated. I'm going to get home with four. And I'm going to get home with four quite often. You give me Quinion Mitchell, who I feel pretty sure you give him a few games, he's going to shut down one side of the field. Makes it a lot harder to score on the Raiders. I like his fit with the Cardinals. I love his fit with the Raiders. Mm -hmm. Well... I should have kept you to to second round and later picks because that was going to be my next selection. Well, I mean, it was the most abundantly obvious, <laughs> and I gave you the opportunity to take it, and you didn't. Yeah, it wasn't the most abundantly obvious. Oh, I me. think he's more obvious than Brock Bowers. Yeah, 
solely because there are other players that I would go, yeah, that's good. With the Titans, it's, hey, Joe Alt goes at six. Pick up the phone and call anybody that will answer. <laughs> we have a problem here. Because, I, look, I like a lot of the other tackles. Mm-hmm. I love Fashano. That first year with him and Skaronsky on the left side, just, rah, that could not that could, that could be less than ideal to begin with. Yep, yep. All right, uh, next up. Uh, Bill G asked, is the Jets' offensive line good enough to leave O-line on the board? If the ones they have stay healthy, yes. <laughs> now, if, ba- if Bowers and Adunze are not there at nine, I don't think it's untoward to think they would take Fashano or Talisi Fawaga. Mm-hmm. So I, I can't tell you that that's the, – the short answer to that is no, you need extra depth. But at 10, you've got franchise players on the board, so it's hard to bypass them. Yeah. Yeah. My next perfect fit is the Chicago Bears. And with their ninth selection, this is where I have Roma Dunes there. Because you have to give Caleb Williams every – advantage that you possibly can i've got to give him another star to throw to do i have to give him another star to throw to i believe so he's already got keenan allen and dj moore i don't have to do squad yeah but keenan allen is i mean okay it's good for a year or two right but i mean a year or two is about as far as i'm looking until i see you play caleb williams until i see you play a game yeah, I, I feel I feel okay. Look, I unabashedly I've said this several times. They need another edge rusher more than they need another, another receiver, and mm-hmm. receiver is super deep. Mm-hmm. Whoever you take is the three on this team for two years minimum. And so, look, I, I think they will take a Dunze, but I, I the he needs another weapon. If you need three elite weapons, you ain't the number one pick in this draft. Just point blank. Might want it. Mm -hmm. You said need it. Why would I not? Why would I not team him up when maybe I'm not sold? Especially in the top 10. Is there a top 10, no doubt top 10 edge rusher in this draft class? Jared Verse. Is Jared Verse that guy? For me. Is Dallas Turner that guy? No. And I think they're both real close to a no. I think they're, they're they're both so close to a no that I look at Roma Dunze and go, he's no doubt a top ten prospect. Oh, I'm gonna and say he so- will be on my team. Oh, I'm gonna say something that's probably gonna shock a lot of people. Okay, bust rate on a Dunze is double what versus is really for me. Really, Bar- verse has no bust rate. His his worst case scenario is he's Brandon Graham. Mm-hmm. That's that's as bad as it's gonna be. And I guess that's why – and I don't have a qualm with you taking a dude. I get what you're saying. I like him. Mm-hmm. There is that fear, and I feel like I do a bad job sometimes of – I make fun of people losing their minds about the fear that a dude can't separate in the NFL. It doesn't mean that it's not in the back of my head as well. It's just not, oh, good Lord, the sky is falling. We have to get Malik Neighbors or we have to get Marvin Harrison Jr. Mm-hmm. There is some bust in a dude. And if you look back over the history of taking three wide receivers this high, that third one has not fared well a whole mess of times. I'm just hoping that I don't have the one, that I don't have that squeaky wheel and the tricycle, so to speak. Did you expect two tricycle references today? I don't think you did. I had a I had such a good joke there, and if <laughs> this wasn't terrestrial radio, I would have no. made it. <laughs> Boss man's not here. I almost feel like asking forgiveness, not permission. <laughs> I don't I don't see why you don't. Um, I'm going Roma Dunze there. I did consider Jared Verse because I think he's a – I almost considered actually doing back-to-back picks here. Actually, you know what name's on the door? I'm going to do that. I'm going to do back-to-back picks here with the same team because Jared Verse I think also should be that answer for the Chicago Bears, and this is why they're having the debate. All that talk about we're bringing everybody in, right? We're going to have the mock trial on what to do with the number nine pick. It's because it's this close. Because there's a good chance you're going to be staring at both of these players. Verse and Roma Dunze. And going, what do I do? Obviously, Jeremy would be on the side of you go Jared Verse because he's got a lower bust rate. 
and you already have Keenan Allen, you already have DJ Moore, I already have weapons for my quarterback. I need to give the you know give uh, Sweat something on the defensive side. I look, I won't have a problem if they go a Dunes at nine because I mean you do need three wide receivers in the modern day NFL. I just feel like you're propping up Caleb Williams, and I've seen that go uh, through the rookie deal. Let the good times roll. But I want to prop him up. I, and I get it. Yeah. That's a lot of capital. You got a ton mm-hmm. of money wrapped up in wide receiver. Mm-hmm. Now you're telling me you're going to throw a top 10 pick at it too? Okay. I'm also looking at the depth of wide receiver going. The receiver I get at 75 dwarfs the edge rusher I get at 75. Yes. And that's why I'm, that's why I would lean verse. Okay. All right. Now, my thought process also is you just took best fit. Two guys with the same team. Yes. That means that team's probably reasonably good and is not going to just be left out in the cold if they don't draft a player at a position. Mm -hmm. So I tend to look at the, oh, good Lord, I have a hole. This guy can fill that hole, and his draft range fits in with where we're picking, which is why, and this is going to sound a little strange, Talizi Fawaga with the the New Orleans Saints is my next one. Okay. If Ryan Ramchick's not going to be able to play or he is as – the knee is as bad as it's being let on, you better have somebody on that right side. And Talizi Fawaga can be an elite player. Now, let's say Ramchick comes back. You can slide him into guard. Fawaga could start the year in Ramchick's place, and if there was some magical healing and he came back, you could slide him into guard. I don't think he'd miss a beat. So I, I saw somebody, I think it was cousin, not cousin Colin Green, saying, you hey, just need somebody to block. I prefer Fawaga with, with New Orleans to anybody else because I don't feel that way about Fashana. Mm-hmm. I think he has to play left tackle. I don't think there's a fit for him anywhere else. All right, the New Orleans Saints and Talese Fawaga at number 14 is a perfect fit for Flostradamus Jeremy Green. We'll continue with today's daily draft. Perfect fits for the upcoming NFL draft, which we will be covering live in Detroit, Michigan in just two weeks. The future of medicine is here at QC Kinetics. QC is the nation's leader in the most exciting revolution in pain management we've seen in decades, regenerative medicine. If you are tired of achy joints, if your joint pain is keeping you from doing what you love, you need to call QC Kinetics now. Surgery, steroids, drugs, these are no longer your best options. Regenerative medicine at QC Kinetics is transforming lives with innovative treatments that deliver lasting results. We're talking natural biologics using your body's own power to repair and restore damaged tissue. QC Kinetics is under the leadership of National Medical Director Dr. Mitchell Scheinkup. Dr. Scheinkup is a pioneer in this field with 20 years of clinical work, tons of research, teaching, and publishing. He wants to get you relief with a needle, not a knife. Call QC Kinetics now to learn more about some exciting options. This is a revolutionary approach that can get you long-term relief with no downtime. Call QC Kinetics now for a free consultation. Phone 828-333-9517 in Asheville and in Greenville. In this week's Marketers Report, we hear about the importance of local radio from Allison Griffin, head of marketing at State Farm iHeart has such a broad broadcast reach that is local and for us to be able to touch customers with a local feel but at a national scale is so efficient and important for us. As the number one audio company, iHeart Media gives marketers access to the audiences, trusted influencers, and data you need to grow. If you're a marketer, go to iHeartResults.com. To tell you that Kino picks 20 winning numbers, we wrote a winning number of our own. Hit it, boys. You pick up to 10. Keno picks 20. It's easy to play for a whole lot of money. Winning numbers are everywhere with Keno from the North Carolina Education Lottery. Must be 18 to play. Approximate overall odds to win a prize range from 1 in 3.86 to 16.63. Problem gambling helpline 877-718-5543. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day. Grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. 
That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingalls. Low prices. Love the savings. If cleanliness is next to godliness, look around the car right now. Is that very godly? Look, life comes at you fast, but so does WNC Auto Detailing. They have the tools to make your interior look like it's coming off the showroom floor. You don't believe me? Check them out on Instagram. All that filth and years of stains disappear. WNC Auto Detailing does full interior and exterior details with paint correction, and they do wax and ceramic coatings. Call WNC Auto Detailing at 455-3700. Premium care with a Southern Hospitality Touch. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. Download our free app on Google Play or the App Store. Type in Asheville Home Search. You'll be able to connect with our team and see all the available homes for sale in our area. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or Clarissa Sells WNC at gmail.com. The Sportsocracy. These guys are a f***ing disgrace. And we are back in the Sportsocracy on ESPN Asheville. Daily draft time. Perfect fits for the 2024 NFL draft. Jeremy, we're back to your pick here. Fourth selection in the draft after you've already taken Tennessee with Joe Alt, the Las Vegas Raiders with Quinion Mitchell, and the New Orleans Saints with Talese Fuaga. Who's your next perfect fit? J.C. Latham with the Cincinnati Bengals. And I know that sounds strange to say because you signed Trent Brown. Trent Brown's 31 years old, and I don't trust the medical on him he has that body type of i'm gonna when i when it really breaks down it's gonna get bad and latham is the only prospect that i really look at that has a shot of being there that i can start you at guard and if something happens to trent brown i kick you right back out to right tackle and you won't miss a beat you know i'm not wild about latham but i'm not wild about latham because of where he's projected to go I know the Chargers really like him, but if he were to somehow fall to 18, that's a that's a nice duct tape solution to a, a Bengal problem. They don't have a problem at right tackle right now, but it's really hard for me to trust Trent Brown. Okay. J.C. Latham with the Cincinnati Bengals. My next selection, I'm going to go just one pick down from you in this draft you went at 18 with Cincinnati I'm going to go at 19 with the LA Rams and it's Byron Murphy that would be to me perfect scenario for them after you after you have Aaron Donald retire you have to replace him somehow and I get that Rams fans and and the Rams themselves are really into uh the rookie with Kobe Turner Mm -hmm. from last year it's two different positions yeah but and I don't. I need to add. I, I need to add some pass rush on the inside. I I don't love the Byron. Mur- I, first of all, he's not falling that far. Second of all, I don't love the fit because they play two completely different positions. Mm-hmm. I would prefer Jerzon Newton with the Rams if they were going to go that route. Uh, I don't know that that's the position that they're going to take. I hear quarterback with the Rams way more often than you would think. No. Especially with Jimmy Garoppolo and Matthew Stafford, and I'm not saying they're going to take one. I just it's an interesting little tidbit since you mentioned them. They could take one in the first round. I hear it a lot. Wow, I would not expect that. Uh, Byron Murphy to me has dropped dead spot Seattle. He ain't get past Seattle at six nine. Mm-hmm. Now the Rams might trade up to get him, but I highly, highly, highly doubt that. All right, and then at number twenty. I'll go to the Pittsburgh Steelers, A.D. Mitchell. That's funny. We're going to take the same team with a completely different player. <laughs> um, A.D. Mitchell can come in, and I, I mean, with him and George Pickens, I get it's a reuniting from college. It's also two players that are like mirror images of each other. I'm ne- I'm never a fan of that. You know, one on the one on either side. No, I I need three guys that do different things because and I've always this is the way I build a that I would build a receiver room. 
I need somebody that can win at the point of the catch. I need somebody that's a really good route runner. And I need somebody that can beat you over the top. The problem is that neither one of those guys are the latter two things that I just said. So, AD's not a beat you over the top guy. He can. I was gonna say he's pretty speedy. He well, he is, but don't don't fall too in love with track speed versus play speed. Mm-hmm. AD is really good at the point of the catch. Yes, he's really big and he's really physical. I don't think he's that deep flyer that people are making him out to be. Not in the NFL, because you're going to get guys that are up in your face. And if you go back and watch tape on him when he got jammed, yeah, he there, there is one. There is one. And I can't remember who it was against. It was at home. I do remember that much. That he got jammed just annihilates the kid, and there is nobody home. Mm-hmm. But there were other times that I saw somebody get up in his face, and it was, no, that's, that, that's unsettling. Just took him out of the play. I don't like the fit with the Steelers. I like the kid, but I need him to be the George Pickens for somebody else. Okay. That's why I like him in Jacksonville. Okay. All right, so they were talking about AD in, in Jacksonville earlier. If you look at the way that receiver room is built, you've got Christian Kirk. That's the over-the-top guy. He can also be the shifty, pretty good route runner if you need him to be. Zay Jones can be both of those things as well, and that gives me the big physical guy. When you get into I have three that are big and physical, well, I can't beat anybody over the top. So you start becoming very susceptible to zone. You start becoming very susceptible to teams that play up into your face. I get why you said it, because they need a receiver. Mm -hmm. I would prefer Brian Thomas Jr. to A.D. Mitchell with the Steelers because he's the one that can just fly past you. He is ridiculously fast, and it's play speed fast as well. Mm -hmm. He has a limitation of... physicality because he's a little thin okay all right your fifth selection well i tell i might as well go ahead and do this one i told you that we were going to have the same team and we were going to take different players um for me it's the pittsburgh steelers but it's jackson powers johnson there are two teams that every time i watch him i just think man he fits your disposition so well because he has such a nasty streak And it's the Steelers and the Lions. The Lions don't need a center. Mm -hmm. I will tell you this. If you let him fall to Detroit, they will take him. And they will play him at guard. Don't tempt them because they will do it. Right. He is the definition of the the big hog molly with a nasty streak. I just look at where Pittsburgh is right now. I I don't love that Dan Moore is still on the left side. I also don't see a ready-made solution to that. I don't see a tackle that's going to fall in their lap at, at 20 that you could put over there and slide more into guard. I also don't think Broderick Jones is ready to play on the left side. He was okay on the right, and I don't really want to move him. But I don't want to put Amarius Mims or Tyler Guyton or any of these more raw prospects over there on the left side. Jackson Powers Johnson is a ready-made prospect right now. And... A center does a good job of propping up guys around him because he's the one making the line calls. And I I just love the kid. I saw him in the middle of a second round yesterday, and I, I, I'm not sure I've recovered from it yet. I felt blood running out of my ear as I was reading it. Like, uh-oh, oh, no. there's the aneurysm. That's one. <laughs> Always knew it was coming. Didn't know it was going to be over Jackson Powers Johnson. Mm-hmm. Um, And then finally, he... I think it's so funny how often we have talked about this guy. And I do love the fit. It's Johnny Newton to the Cardinals. I don't don't know why he's falling. I'm getting asked this question on Twitter an alarmingly high amount of times. I don't know what it is. I don't know what he has done. I, I think it's just he has fallen out of the media landscape because he's hurt. So he didn't run to the combine. No pro day, no senior bowl, no no any of those things, and so we've we've allowed him to be passed, and I don't I don't think that's the right call, but I don't see a way Arizona's going to let him pass twice. I'm not sure they'll let him pass once. I'm not sure he won't be the pick at 27. Okay, but I've seen him fall a long way into the second round, and that is insanity to me. 
a team that needs physicality up front and really needs a guy that can that can penetrate and get to a quarterback, I don't know what more you would want. Mm-hmm. Because that is he is elite at that. Problem is that he might be a little undersized at the next level, but he weighed in at I think three oh four, which doesn't seem small to me. I don't know if he's gonna play it that way. I don't think he played it that way. Yeah. He was listed at two ninety five and he looked way more two eighty five. But I think he's an ideal fit with the Cardinals. All right, Jerzon Newton to the Arizona Cardinals. Um, my last perfect fit. You know, Tank's a homer, so he's got to take his own team here. It's Tampa Bay. And it's Chop Robinson. Yeah, that one makes a lot of sense. Chop Robinson is a, to me, he's a Todd Bowles edge rusher. And I think he can, I think he can play anything they ask him to in the Todd Bowles system. I think you could stand him up if you had You're to. You're going to have to stand him up. But he can have his hand in the dirt as well. No, he can't. Really? Don't do it. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. You'll regret it. In a four-man wide nine, maybe. Go back and watch that tape on him and look at him against a really elite lineman. You'll see why you can't have his hand in the dirt. I think he's a no-doubt 3-4 edge rusher. And I think he may be edge rusher, rusher exclusive for a year or two. Mm-hmm. That's my fear with him is that I don't know that you ever round him off to a point where he's going to be more than that. I also, at 26, don't really care. I mean, I need guys that can get after the quarterback. It's yes. one of the most important things in the game. Yes. But him with with able to use the athleticism, that's going to be how he beats guys. Yes. It's are. not going to be hand in the dirt, strength on strength. He ain't winning that way in the NFL. That uh, that front office, the scouting department, absolutely in love with his athleticism, which they should be, because he's one of the most athletic edge rushers to be in the NFL draft in hell about forty years. I think his he's RAS score was. I just had that somewhere here. It was like nine nine six or something. It was some nine dumb. six eight out of a possible ten which would be 53rd amongst all defensive ends in a draft since 1987. Pretty high up there on the uh, on the relative athletic score. You're in the Sportsocracy. This is ESPN Asheville 92.9 FM, 880 AM and 1400. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Milder days ahead with 80 degree temperatures possible by the end of the weekend as high pressure is finally going to settle back in. Wind advisory and gusty winds this afternoon, close to 60 degrees with that wind gusting 40 plus in spots and maybe a couple of showers right through your Friday evening. So grab the rain gear if you are going to be heading out. We'll break up the clouds late, still quite breezy to windy overnight. Lows in the low 40s, sunny, breezy and upper 60s on Saturday. Sunday sunshine up near 80. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Bojangles. It's always bow time. It's bow time. When you combine the bold taste of a Bojangles Chicken Supreme with dill pickles, Carolina Gold barbecue sauce, and a toasted bun that's great on the go, you get Bo's Bird Dog. In fact, you can grab two of them for five bucks. Available for a limited time only. It's bow time. Ew. Gotta get rid of this old Backstreet Boys t-shirt. Tell me why. Because it stinks, boys. Tell me why. I've washed it so many times, but the odor won't come out. Tell me why. No, you tell me why I can't get rid of this odor. Have you tried Downy Rinse and Refresh? It doesn't just cover up odors. It helps remove them. Wow, it worked, guys. Yeah. Downy Rinse and Refresh removes more odor in one wash than the leading value detergent in three washes. Find it wherever you buy laundry products. Above and beyond. That's what defines our commitment to our customers at Parks Ford Hendersonville. As your hometown dealer, Parks Ford works hard for you to provide a -a one-of-a-kind buying experience through incredible service, honest communication, and trusted accountability. Stop by to experience the Parks Promise yourself, a promise to do better, to be better every day. We can't wait to meet you and help you find the right vehicle for you. Stop in and shop ParksFordHendersonville.com. That's ParksFordHendersonville.com. Train heating and cooling systems are tested, retested, engineered, and re-engineered to keep up with you. They run together. Visit TrainInfo.com to find your local independent train dealer. TrainInfo.com. It's hard to stop a train. Did you know Ingalls only sells USDA choice and prime cuts of meat? Maybe it's time to reward yourself. 
Our butchers cut all our meat fresh in the store every day, grass-fed, organic, you name it. Not only that, we'll even cut it to order just the way you like it. And we grind meat fresh in the store multiple times a day. It's all in the bag. That's the best meat in town for the best folks in town. Ingles, low prices, love the savings. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics have teamed up under new ownership by an Asheville native to better serve our community with the finest custom apparel and unique branded items at the best price. Showtime Sports and Mountain Graphics can customize whatever you, your team, business, or local group may need through high quality screen printing, embroidery, and laser engraving right here in Asheville. Free personal delivery within Buncombe County and a reduced delivery fee anywhere in Western North Carolina. Visit ShowtimeSportsAVL.com and MountainGraphicsAVL.com. Your one-stop custom apparel shops. We're back counting down to kickoff. Let's look at today's three keys to premium pre-gaming with Beast Unleashed, presented by Monster Brewing. Number one, beat the heat. Unleash the beast with bold, familiar flavors, zero caffeine and zero sugar. Number two, running the option. There's four to choose from. White haze, each perfect, scary berries, and my personal favorite, mean green. And number three at 6% ABV, max protect. Always drink responsibly and you must be 21 or over. Beast Unleashed, available at your local retailer. You're in the sportsocracy, and this is ESPN Asheville. It's time for the most important message of the day, Jeremy Green. Don't do crimes! Uh, New York City, they've got a lot of crimes. One guy goes on a uh, bit of a joyride the other day, and uh, it's, it's a joyride that I've never seen quite before. Man decided that he was, uh, you know, going to have some fun on Wednesday night. Arrested on Thursday morning, though, after he got back from his little jaunt. Because he didn't decide to steal a car. This guy stole a boat. Not only did he steal a boat to go cruising around on the Hudson River, but he stole a New York City fire boat. That's a bold strategy. <laughs> the boat that belonged to the New York City Fire Department, it was not an active fire boat. It was a decommissioned fire boat, but nonetheless, still wind up with two counts of grand larceny for trying to take that sucker on a uh, on a midnight cruise off of uh, Pier 66 on the west side of Manhattan. Once aboard the fire boat, the man was able to uh, drift a short distance into the Hudson River, they say, but he quickly got stuck. Then he leapt overboard, plunging into the frigid waters, and then later emerging on a second stolen vessel. They don't say what the second boat that he stole was. It's just, I mean, I guess if one doesn't work, why not try another one? If at first you don't succeed, <laughs> try, try again. I probably shouldn't do that when you're doing crimes. No, definitely not. My story is about, it was from Florida, St. Petersburg, Florida. It's about a 35-year-old man named Wiley Weeks. And did you, ever, did you ever watch that show, Parks and Recreation? No. With uh, Nick Offerman, had the big mustache. Yeah, the bacon guy. Yeah. Uh, he, at one point in that show, decides to go up to a city official with a note. And that note says, he says it's a permit, and that note says, I do what I want, which is basically the justification that Mr. Weeks here used for sitting naked in a trash can on a public sidewalk. Uh -huh. He did not believe that was a crime of any kind. And so when cops walked up to him, he felt as though he had committed no crime, so he didn't have to speak to them. He smelled of alcohol, shocker, was unsteady on his feet and visibly intoxicated when they removed him from the garbage can. God bless our civil servants, because <laughs> they had to take a fat naked guy out of a garbage can which I'm sure was not a fun experience. He then refused to provide his name or anything about himself, which brought him another charge. He has already pled on both charges because apparently he sobered up and realized that it is not okay to sit naked in a garbage can. But the AP did a little digging on Mr. Weeks, and this is not the first time. He has been arrested oh, really? for public, public nudity. Mm -hmm. He and a friend decided that it would be funny to take their clothes off while exiting a bar. That was in Tampa. 
just under a year ago. I feel like that was a bad idea. So here's what I don't understand. Mr. Weeks is not a small man, and he's not a particular, particularly attractive man. Your nudity is not good for anybody. Nobody. Not even yourself. Stop sharing it with others. There are certain things you shouldn't share, <laughs> and for you, that is one. I mean, I do respect looking at cops and going, nope, this is a crime. Yeah, it is. Nope. Not. I'm okay. I can do this. Okay. There you go. Though? There you go. We should hook him up with uh, Winona Judd's daughter. Did you see that story? Ashley? No. No. That's her sister. Oh, that's her sister. Yeah, that's right. That's her sister. Yeah, her daughter got arrested for, she was holding a sign on the side of a of a road, and it said, ride for a ride. You can assume what, what uh-huh. that meant. Aha. Uh-huh. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. Apparently her, apparently she thinks her nudity is a, a plus as well. Hey, is it? Uh, no. 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 It's not. Okay. Uh, in the words of Jerry Seinfeld, there's good naked. And then there's bad naked. I was going to say, Ashley, you know, yeah. that's a good one. She's almost old enough to be your mom. Yeah, I know. Oh, you're one yeah. of those. I know. Oh, good yes. Lord. Yes. Hey, we're both adults now. That's all I'm <laughs> saying. At Sports Tech ESPN, <laughs> let me cut him off before he does actual crimes on the radio. How is that going to be a crime? That will never be a crime. I don't know. It, it felt... I mean, another 20 years and she's in a nursing home, maybe that's a crime. That but... felt a little crimey. I don't know why. <laughs> wow. I don't know why if you didn't have a crush on Ashley Judd in the 90s, then there's something wrong with you. I don't know, what was that movie she was in? She was in some movie. Where, I want to say like Luke Perry was in it. It was called like... A normal life or something. That was the first time that I ever saw all of Ashley Judd. It's worth a watch, at least just for that scene, ladies and gentlemen, just so you know. Uh, anyhow, let's uh, get into less risque topics. Uh, in our YouTube chat, we have a uh, message from Sizzlesack55, which I'm going to assume <laughs> is a, I'm going to assume that's a reference to, mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Terrell Suggs. Mm-hmm. That's also might have been my nickname in college. No. I found it funny when bringing up the Ravens, saying, hey, you don't have your receivers. When looking at what's around the Bengals in the AFC, the Ravens literally only lost OBJ. Every other weapon is back. The only problem with that is that all those weapons outside of Zay Flowers are not very good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rashad Bateman, I've tried. Okay, I liked him a lot coming out of Minnesota, and he is allergic to catching footballs. They need another receiver. The reason that I don't worry about it that much with Baltimore, you're the best drafting team in the league. This is the deepest receiver draft in the history of the NFL. I think you're going to figure it out. Now, do I like Houston better right now? I do. And that could be recency biased. It could just be that I'm looking at that team going, I don't know how you're supposed to stop them. I really have no clue how you're supposed to stop Houston at this point. But, I mean, Baltimore's still my two. Mm Mm-hmm. Buffalo's regressed. I think Miami has regressed. Basically, every team in the AFC North not named the Bengals has regressed at least a little bit. Mm-hmm. I don't feel as good about Jacksonville. And the AFC West is the Chiefs. End of message. Uh, let's continue here with our little series of Tank does a terrible job at ranking the uh, best draft picks from each and every NFL team over the last 40 years. I mean, just, you know, a tip from the first or second hour. If there's a player that the team drafted in the seventh round that led them to a Super Bowl, might want to put them you on the best draft them on the list, list, especially if it's a historically bad drafting team. <laughs> Maybe so. Um, this is not a, this, this is not, our next one is not a bad drafting team. It's the Dallas Cowboys. Over the last 40 years, there's a lot of draft success for the Dallas Cowboys. This was the toughest one to come up with a top five. Okay. Because there were so many good choices. But I feel like you couldn't leave out any of the big three. So you're referencing Troy Aikman, Emmett Smith, Michael Irvin. Yes. Now, this is within the last 40 years. This is the so. last 40 years. Best draft picks. So before anybody throws Roger Staubach. No. Nope. Nope. Does not qualify. This is going back to 1990 
or excuse me, 1985. My number one is Larry Allen. He was the 46th overall pick in the draft and is one of the greatest of all time. Dog. Yes. 1994 draft. To me, he was number one. And then I went big three after that. Because all those dudes were taken to the top 17. Mm -hmm. Emmett Smith was two in 1990. Troy Aikman was three in 1989. And then my four is Michael Irvin from 1988. Then after that is where I have like a mishmash of dudes for the fifth slot as the best, fifth best pick of the last 40 years for the Dallas Cowboys. And I believe I'm going to go with Jason Witten. The dude was an all-timer, and he was the 69th overall pick in the 2003 draft. I get you wouldn't have drafted him any higher than that. Maybe in hindsight you would have. I have no qualm with your list there. Okay. The others in consideration, DeMarcus Ware. That one should be pretty high. DeMarcus Ware and Khalil Mack had a lot in common. Mm-hmm. That if you watch the tape, it was pretty easy to figure out. Um, they're real good. The problem is that Ware played at Troy, Khalil Mack played at Buffalo, and a lot of people didn't necessarily see them as highly. Khalil Mack was another one of the 97s that I had earlier. Mm-hmm. I remember I, I couldn't stop watching the tape against Ohio State. DeMarcus Ware was kind of the one that paved the way for him. Of You didn't have to be a super large school pass rusher mm-hmm. to still be really, really good. So I, I think that one needed to be mentioned at the very least. Yes, and then there's Tyron Smith. Yes, current New York Jet. Mm-hmm. No big deal. Zach Martin, 16th overall pick in 2014. And then there's the two new kids that we can't put on the list yet, but you know eventually they're going to be probably somewhere on this list. Michael C. Parsons Lambs. will be probably the greatest of all time. I maybe. That, I was about to say, we're, we we went a little far. Sure, though. sure, I'm, but, but maybe. And then C.D. Lamb. I, would, I, I think it's already almost within the range of possibilities to put him on this list. Micah? Mm-hmm. He's that good. Is he that he much is better that than Demarcus good. Ware, though? No, that's what I'm saying. You Demarcus remember, Ware's the six in this scenario. But you got to remember, Demarcus Ware's career was split. He spent mm-hmm. several years in Denver too. Yes. I would say if Micah Parsons resigns with Dallas and injuries don't become an issue, he would be on that list almost instantaneously. Mm-hmm. That's how good he was. Yep. And you've also got to remember, and I'm looking. I remember that draft well. There were some personality things about him. There were some teams that were super off of him. There was another one of those, too, and I can't remember now who it was. What do you mean? They had another one that had character red flags that was pretty good. I just can't think now of who it was. When I was looking for my list of bad picks, I had to dig pretty deep. Yeah. Because mine are going to be, at least in the, the range of time that I've been cognizant enough to understand, Number one's Taco Charlton. Mm-hmm. I mean, you drafted. Bad. I mean, passwords Taco. Yikes, he was. Good lord, he was bad. Um. Other than that, I got in like Felix Jones, Bobby Carpenter, and it was just that they weren't as good as the rest of these guys. No. It's kind of hard for me to look at a third round pick and go, "That was a disaster," even though some of them were. Mm-hmm. But those were the biggest ones for me. Okay. Now, if you want to get back into the mid-90s, it is shocking how bad they were at drafting in the first round while they were really good. Oh, yeah. Yeah, every one of those picks was was just disaster. Nightmare. Yeah, (laughs) just an absolute disaster. After they hit on, uh, who was it? Hell, after they hit on Emmett in 1990. Other than Larry Allen, did they have another great pick? Uh, Darren Woodson. Uh, Darren Woodson. Yeah, I forgot. That's the funny thing. They hit one in later rounds practically every year. But then you look at the first rounder and go, Shantae Carver. Mm -hmm. 
I don't, I don't remember much about him. Oh, that's because he didn't last long. Right. Uh, and then let's flip over to an AFC team, the Denver Broncos. Last 40 years, we're the best draft picks that they've had. I started at one, number one with the number two overall pick in 2011. Von Miller. Von Miller. My number two is a bit of a throwback to my childhood. 1989, number 20 overall. Would you like to take a guess? What year? 1989, number 20 overall. Denver Broncos select. Steve Atwater. Oh. I was like, this is, I, I was two years old, so it's going to be. <laughs> it's now, a you name you know, though. challenged me anything in my life, but. You, it's a name you know, Mr. Yeah, he Hall calls Hall. me a trip to a Super Bowl, so. So you're holding a grudge. 100%. Yeah, his, his name's not even in my head. Uh-huh. Um, then this is where it got tricky, because Denver's another one of those teams that does not really have great success in drafts. Yeah, they're putting together your worst list was a lot more fun than Dallas's was. Uh, yes. My number three is one of these, hey, he was a late-round draft pick and led them to a Super Bowl. I mean, granted, he had a quarterback, unlike Jamal Anderson had with the Atlanta Falcons. But Terrell Davis at number 160, or excuse me, 196 in 1995. That's pretty solid. One of the best draft picks you've ever had. Uh, and then I have two more plus 100 draft picks that they made. 126, and actually both of them are from 2006. 126 was Elvis Doomerville. And 119 was Brandon Marshall. Brandon Marshall should definitely be up there. Again, these are, to me, these are the best picks that they've made in the last 40 years. Denver's had a lot of good players. But not many of them came to them through the draft. They've had a lot of grumpers, though. Oh, yeah. Paxton Lynch. Oh. Ashley Lalee. Mm. Ashley Lalee was proof positive that I could not have been an NFL GM when I was a sophomore in high school because I thought he was real good. Mm -hmm. And he was real bad. Tim Tebow. I mean, how high does Tebow have to be on this list? On the worst picks? Yes. I mean, he's he's in it. Maybe three. I would. I have him two behind Paxton Lynch. There Ashley Lilly is my three. Then they, in consecutive years, went Sylvester Williams, Bradley Roby, Shane Ray, Paxton Lynch. Shane Ray. Oh, I remember. I'll never forget everybody losing their mind about Shane Ray when they drafted him. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first years that I did this, and there were a lot of people that I had heard in the median age of the interwebs. Because it wasn't what it is now, but it was still, oh, we're doing stuff. Freedom of information, is it, it, it's, it's moving. I had heard things about Shane Ray that I went, no, I, there is no shot that with arms that short and just nothing plus about you. But I think it was the NFL Network that had him at eight overall or something like that. And he had fallen, and it became this huge story of why did he fall? Well, because he's not very good. That's the, the the big knock on him. He just signed with the Bills or somebody. Still bouncing around the league. Ten years later. Wow. Unbelievable. You're in the Sportsocracy, the CSPN Asheville, 92.9 FM, 880 AM, and 1400. And we'll continue with the uh, the top fives of the last Four, top five draft picks the last 40 years for each and every NFL team leading up to the 2024 NFL draft. eBay Motors is here for the ride. Go ahead, feel your engine. Admire that perfectly installed exhaust. Your vehicle's moving along this freeway like it was made from fresh installs and a whole lot of love. With eBay Motors, you get over 122 million parts to keep it running. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, they'll be the perfect fit every time. Plus, at these prices, well, we're burning rubber, not cash. Keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. Elevate your outdoor living space this year using stone. Tanzite has developed stone decking crafted without any plastic composite materials to redefine durability. Visit tanzite.com to see how stone decking doesn't scratch. 
stays cooler, isn't slippery, and has all the durability you would expect from Stone, which is why it's guaranteed for life. At Tanzite.com, you will see how we developed Stone to easily transform any ordinary wood deck. You can even make your deck waterproof for a dry space below. Versatile and adaptable, Tanzite is perfect for decks, stairs, over concrete, or ground applications. Visit Tanzite.com to start planning your project with a free 3D design and construction plan tailored to your space. Order a sample today to witness the incredible beauty and durability firsthand at Tanzite.com. That's T-A-N-Z-I-T-E.com. At Ingalls, we're proud to work with hundreds of local farms and businesses in the communities we call home. Not only does it ensure that you get top quality fresh items for your family table, it's a way for us to support the amazing individuals who pour their heart and soul into delivering the very best they can do. Quality, freshness, community, it's all in the bag. Ingalls, low prices, love the savings. If you're looking to buy, sell, or invest in real estate in the mountains, you need to call the agents at Clarissa Sells WNC, brokered by eXp Realty. Check us out online at clarissasellswnc.com. And did I mention that Clarissa Sells WNC loves teachers? We love teachers so much, we're giving back 25% of our commission at closing. For more information, contact us today at 828-774-6343 or clarissasellswnc at gmail.com. Dirty, perky, shark, and flat. I'm as mad as hell, and I'm not gonna take this anymore! Shark, and flat, and fork, and Let the hate flow through you. You ask, we answer. A lot of people have asked what happened. I'm mad. Well, it's back, and it's back for good. This will be how we end the show moving forward every single day. And now, I'm mad at Kentucky basketball. Because you delusional, bluegrass state-living individuals are driving me crazy. You go through a coaching search that literally every high-end coach in America could not get away from fast enough because you are a six that thinks you are a nine. You have been for a long time. And you want me to tell you why guys like Scott Drew and Billy Donovan and Dan Hurley didn't have any interest in dealing with you because you live in this little bubble that only lives and breathes Kentucky basketball. So you can't even go to dinner if you're not winning. And if you are winning, then everybody wants to talk to you and shake your hand because you bunch of wackadoodles have made Kentucky one of the least desirable high-end blue blood jobs in college basketball. And you want proof of that? John Calipari just won seven. His win percentage was 769 at Kentucky. You couldn't get rid of him fast enough because you weren't winning national titles. Let me break this down to you. You ain't a blue blood anymore. You were, but then the game changed, and you couldn't react to it. So now the Yukons, North Carolina's Dukes of the world have passed you. And if you don't get out of your little bubble, it's going to stay that way forever. And Mark Pope, who, yeah, I get why you're not excited about that, but that's one of yours. He played at Kentucky, and on the day you announce him, you go to Big Blue Kentucky basketball message boards, and we're better than this. Hate to break it to you. No, you're not. You're the six that showed up and started pounding dollar marks at Applebee's thinking you were going to meet a guy. And you know who you met? Bucky, the garbage man that, that, that at 1 o'clock went, let's go. Because that's who you are. <laughs> Sorry, Kentucky. I'm mad, but you know what I'm not mad about? Sports betting here in the state of North Carolina. It's legal, and this weekend is a great time to get in on DraftKings Sportsbook. you got a lot of teams that are playing for very little, and you can use the advice I gave you earlier, and you can do it all from the privacy of your own mobile phone. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with our promo code, WPEK and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. Whether you want to play some prop bets, same game parlays, UFL, NBA, it doesn't matter. You can do it all with DraftKings Sportsbook. Now the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using our code WPEK and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code WPEK. 
The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only, new customers only. Subject to regulatory licensing requirements, bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit wagering and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. This is your Exergen Temporal Scanner weather forecast on ESPN Asheville. Milder days ahead with 80 degree temperatures possible by the end of the weekend as high pressure is finally going to settle back in. Wind advisory and gusty winds this afternoon, close to 60 degrees with that wind gusting 40 plus in spots and maybe a couple of showers right through your Friday evening. So grab the rain gear if you are going to be heading out. We'll break up the clouds late, still quite breezy to windy overnight. Lows in the low 40s, sunny, breezy, and upper 60s on Saturday. Sunday sunshine up near 80. From the Weather Channel, I'm Ray Stajic. This report is sponsored by Indeed.com. Need to hire? You need Indeed. Their all-in-one platform helps you attract, interview, and